go. We're going to start the recording. It says it's recording already, so I guess there we are. Okay. So um, I'm Vance Stevens, and uh, this is I, I also do something called Learning Together. This is episode number 445. And uh, this is the 3rd of April, 2020. And we're in something even more important than that. We're uh, in the EVO 2020 uh, Best of EVO session, which would have been about happening about this time in Denver right now, but we're uh, online, which is a great thing because this, this presentation actually was, um, it's something we do at TESOL conventions, I think in Chicago, Jane was there, and also in uh, Atlanta, Jane was there. And in, uh, uh, Jane and I were actually in the electronic village somewhere presenting on Minecraft and they were, they had, that, that session kind of overran with the best of EVO session, which was starting up in another place. And we ran over to that place and uh, got it going. But the thing was that they, they, they had online, uh, sorry, on-site presenters that's the way it's set up at the TESOL conferences. They have some people come to the conference and present on site, and uh, many more present online. So we were setting that up uh, to happen in Denver, which should be happening about now, or maybe yesterday or the day before. But um, when the conference got canceled, canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which we're all unfortunately in the middle of. Um, we were geared up to go ahead and do that whole thing online because we set up a crowdsourced uh, Google Doc, and I'll just show it to you. There it is right there. Oh, I have to click the share button. There we are. So um, this is the, the Google Doc where the not canceled, we've moved online. The conference was canceled, but we are, uh, we were just geared up to do this at the conference. We were presenting live and online. We had a lot of online presenters scheduled to present with us. So we just continued to work here. So if you're uh, looking for this document, it's, I'll just put this in the text chat, I suppose. It's the uh, tinyurl.com uh, best slash best 2020 EVO. So you can all follow this document if you want. I'll put it in the text chat as soon as I get back to it. And there's a table of contents here. And if I go to the schedule of presentations, I can show you that we are here. It's 1346 right now. Jane and I are, are about to introduce this session. I'm, I'm doing that already. Um, and then we're going to have these presentations that you see here. We have uh, Mariana Serra, I saw her in the room, presenting classroom-based research, and Richard Smith, I saw him in the room, mentoring teacher research. And after that, we'll have uh, Techno Clil, Daniela and Letizia, and Maha Hassan uh, in about an hour from now. We'll be doing uh, CF, CEFR versus assessment. And Nellie, who's here right now, will be talking about Moodle for Teachers and uh, Tools for Student Collaboration. So all this will take place. If you click on any of these links, for example, if you want to know, well, if you want to go to, the, oh, let's just go to the introduction coordinators, because that takes us actually to what we're doing right now. May, I don't know if we want to uh, be presenting this, but well, basically, we're here. I don't know, Jane, is this a good place to start? Um, yep. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe I can hand over. Shall I hand over to you, Jane? Would you like no. to do that? No, <laughs> not ready. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let's see. If I actually try to present this, I'll just okay. go ahead and do that. Okay. So there we are. So we're uh, right now at the Best of EVO online, and um, this is. Are there? There. Oh, these slides. I should say are all. If you go to uh, that link at the bottom, the B 
the, I can't really see it back there. It's been covered up by something in the slides here. Okay, so anyway, basically, uh, let's see if I can get back to it. Okay, so there, that, oof, ah, I can't see it in my screen. Uh, anyway, at the bottom left-hand corner, there's a link, and all those links work. If you go to that link, if you can get to tinyurl.com slash best2020 EVO, then you can find all the links for everything that's being presented here. So that's actually what you want to do. And you'll in including the slideshow. Jane, is it time for you to pop in? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm sharing the slide. And, 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 and you're Jane Chien, who's a coordinator. I'm Jane. Yes, I'm Jane Chien. Um, I'm from Taipei, Taiwan, uh, from National Taipei University of Education, and glad that uh, that everybody is here with us. Um, well, I was actually quite um, disappointed that TESOL, we couldn't go to TESOL Denver. It had to cancel all the, uh, you know, hotel reservations and flights. Um, and, and during the past couple of weeks, um, my students and I were, were um, trying to keep keep track of like uh, up to date to as to um, co how different countries are um, uh, you know coping with uh, COVID-19 and here we are a lot of teachers are now um, having to teach online um, and there's songs about I will survive COVID-19 teaching online in Zoom um, and kids, my, my sisters, they're in, my sister is in Orlando and their kids are like first grader, kindergarten, they're, they had distant learning at home and all day long and, and they're doing, going on Google Classroom. And so I think this is the best time for all of us to be together um, for uh, best of EVO um, online. Uh, we've been doing this, um, uh, for quite some time now, and um, uh, all of us are gathered together to share something um, that we have, like our sessions, and um, if we could discuss, um, go over like uh, uh, what we have, uh, what sessions uh, you know uh, we provide um, for 2020 EVO 2020, and also. Um, if you have any, we, if we could discuss how we could cope with um, teaching online and share our, share our experiences, and I think that would be wonderful. It's a very, it's, um, uh, it's a very good time to share our expertise in teaching online. Yes, and this year, if you could, um, Vance, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah, and incidentally, Christine is here. Maybe yeah, can. Chris Christine can say something about this. This is about the history of uh, our interest, uh, the best of EVO, Electronic Village Online. Maybe, Christine, this would be a good time for you to pop in. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vance, and thank you very much, uh, Jane, for putting this on and for not uh, leaving TESOL completely uh, not happening. Um, I was very glad to see that um, you guys were still up for doing this. And so um, I did put together the report, the annual report for the call interest section uh, that we had started earlier, but I finalized it yesterday. And um, I was happy to see that you updated it um, on the slide here, uh, Vance, I had, or Jane, I had forgotten to do that. Um, so we started this project uh, in the year 2000. And uh, as you may realize, this is our 20th anniversary of the founding of EVO. So um, it was definitely a special year for me and for Tom Robb and Susan Gare who all would have been uh, in Denver at the TESOL convention. Um, and I had ordered a flag and was going, was prepared to send it to TESOL actually the next day. And then things unraveled and uh, I actually forgot uh, to take it to the post office. I left it at the house and 
And then by the next day, everything had changed. So um, the flag says 20 years of EVO. So we can still celebrate that next year because next year will be the 20th anniversary of the sessions because we started our first 10 sessions of EVO um, in 2001 uh, with 120 participants. So as you can see by the numbers here, um, <laughs> that has skyrocketed uh, since 2001. So this year we had 1,315 participants and that is uh, from the 14 sessions that reported, we actually had 15 sessions. So one of them, uh, we do not know the numbers from, um, and they came from 72 countries around the world. And that to me is just a tribute to the resiliency and, and the, uh, the spirit and the stamina of uh, teaching and learning online. And Jane, I really like what, what you said uh, earlier. Uh, this is definitely, our uh, catapulted teaching online uh, into the forefront. And so uh, I think all of us need to uh, share our expertise in this. And uh, I uh, just submitted a, a proposal for a faculty development grant in my institution. Of course, everybody here is scrambling as well and just doing the best they can with teaching online and not having had much training in that. So. Um, uh, a lot more will be coming from this. A lot of good will be coming from this. And we hope to reconnect uh, in 2021 uh, in Houston. And so um, there is a call for proposals for EVO 2021. And you see the dates here. Um, we will be posting the call for proposals. And uh, the deadline most likely is going to be September 13th. And then EVO 2021 for our anniversary sessions will be from January 9th to February 14th, which is Valentine's Day in 2021, so a special day. And um, I'm very happy to be announcing this, but I'm also very happy and thank you for sharing this now. Uh, this is an incredible team. Uh, the team has changed over the last 20 years, of course, but one thing that has never changed is an indomitable spirit of getting things done uh, in a collaborative fashion. Um, and it's just been a phenomenal project for all of those 20 years and something that I'm extremely proud of. And Vance has been uh, there with me for the longest. And I thank you very much, Vance, for your stamina <laughs> you. and for yeah, your efforting <laughs> and all of that. And, yeah. and uh, it, it, does take, it does take a lot of effort and a lot of commitment to keep going. So thank you very much. Okay, I don't know what we want to run through here because uh, Richard is queued up here. Is he the next person on? Maybe I should. I should uh, just pop out of this and let's see. Let me just see where we are. Is Richard the next? Is he the first one on? He's, uh, yes. No, no, he's the second one. So actually, we have Mariana at 1400. That's in four minutes. We still have four minutes. I'm just checking myself. Uh, but uh, it, it continue, or, or uh, Jane, or. Or, or uh, Nellie, would you like to say something? Uh -huh, Nellie sure. is also our. Um, coordinator, mm -hmm. Nellie. Good point. Sorry about that. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, we're going to start, right, in a couple of minutes. So um, I'll be talking later on and summarizing how I feel about EVO. But I think that what Christina said uh, is so true that um, you know, we were lucky that we actually had these professional developments in January and mid-February because um, all the participants are thanking us, they're thanking me, that they had a chance to learn online and that they're comfortable teaching online. So I think this is something that went on because of the situation. A lot more teachers around the world out of those 1,300 are actually well-prepared 
to um, to teach online in their schools. So I think that something that thank you, Christine, for making this possible with um, Eva, because you're you're the one that started the whole thing with Tom and um, others. So yeah, it's um, yeah. it's because of you that we're here. But you have held it together for many years, Nelly. So don't, uh, you know, don't uh, think of this lightly. And I don't. Uh, there have been many lead coordinators over the years. Well, uh, quite quite a few, not many, but quite a few. Um, and you have been an extraordinary one, uh, if I may say so, in holding uh, the team together and making sure. Um, that everything that needs to happen actually does happen. And um, I hope you keep doing that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But I think it's a team effort <laughs> and I think that it takes, um, you know, it takes a village. And I think we are electronic um, <laughs> village One online. One thing I, I should probably mention that uh, maybe you and Vance are aware of, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, we're now approaching, and I, I, I'm going to have to go back and actually check the numbers um, in more detail. We are approaching 40,000 teachers that we have uh, trained in teaching online by having them host their and moderate their own sessions online. And, you know, of course, we do some training beforehand. Um, to make sure that they're successful, but we're approaching 40,000. So that is an astonishing, mind boggling number to me. Um, but it's, it's so important now. And back then, you know, of course, I had no idea what, uh, how important this was going to be. Uh, there are still a lot of people that don't know how to do it. And of course, as all of us know, people are saying, or have been saying, oh, we'd rather teach face-to-face. -face. It's not possible to have the same um, approach or the same uh, interaction or even the same uh, connection with the students as you do in a face-to-face -face class. Uh, the quality is not the same. And as you well know, all of that has been debunked. And uh, we keep showing it year after year. And now this year, uh, unfortunately, uh, given to the circumstance, uh, given the circumstances, uh, you know, it's now, at least in my institution, it's becoming clear that there is an enormous need for this. And uh, it is, as we know, it is possible to deliver very effective online teaching and learning, but it doesn't come uh, just by switching on a Zoom screen. That in itself is not enough. And so there is a lot more that goes into it. And we've done the training and keep doing it. And thank you to all of you. OK, well, thank you very much. And uh, I think we, we want to keep a little bit to the times here. We just came to the top of the hour. Mm -hmm. And so our first uh, presentation, which has, each presentation has 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I would like to actually be able to talk to people. Everyone has the ability to speak here if you want. Oh, by the way, if you're not speaking, could you please mute your mic and when you want to speak, uh, turn it on because otherwise we might get some sound interference. And if that happens, you could uh, end up in the waiting room. So um, in any event, uh, we have Linda Casanini, Ruben Matsai, and Mariana Serra here. And I saw the, the last two of you and if you would like to present, it's your, we're ready to go. You have 20 minutes. We'd like to talk to you if possible. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Vance, for your uh, introduction. Hello, everyone. And uh, welcome to uh, TESOL, uh, the best of EVO 2020. Uh, this is, as Vance said, classroom-based research for professional development session presentation. Um, also, as Van said, uh, my partners, uh, also lead moderators, are Lydia Casalini and Ruben Massey from Argentina. My name is Mariana Serra and I'm from Argentina too. Um, we uh, uh, 
carried out or we held this session uh, with uh, supported by a group of seven moderators and um, a tech mentor too. Uh, they, uh, they are from different countries. We would like to thank uh, Asli Saglam, Richard Smith, uh, Kenan Dikilitas and Dario Vanegas for their support during our session. Um, okay, so uh, this presentation uh, consists of three parts. I will be talking about um, classroom-based research uh, for professional development previous sessions, also about what is meant by classroom-based research, and also about how classroom-based research contributes to teachers' professional development. My partner, Ruben, will then be talking about the different topics uh, teacher participants chose, uh, uh, chose in order to design their exploratory research projects. And Lydia Casalini at the end will be talking or will be sharing our reflections and suggestions for, for, uh, for further uh, additions. Okay, so as regards uh, classroom-based research, um, uh, for professional development previous editions. Uh, it, uh, in 2016, under the leadership of Asli Saglam and Kenan Dikilitas, um, uh, well, it was uh, all started. Then in uh, the second and third uh, EBO sessions, classroom-based uh, research, I mean, uh, were under the leadership of uh, Richard Smith and Paula Rebolledo. And in 2019, uh, again, Kenan Dikilitas and Asli Saglam were the uh, lead moderators. Um, during uh, some of uh, the previous um, EVOs, uh, thank you for uh, our for showing our PPT. Yes. Uh, <coughs> a minute, uh, Mariana. Thank I you. Will show it in a minute, yes. Great, thank you. During some of our previous, uh, some of the previous um, sessions, uh, Lydia, Ruben, and I were, uh, took part as moderators. Right. Okay. Um, then, as regards uh, what is meant by classroom-based research, um, I would like to say that we focused on um, classroom research, on teacher research. That is to say, uh, teacher research, um, research carried out by teachers into, uh, in their classrooms and related to topics that uh, are important to them, yes, in their teaching contexts. Uh, next slide, please, Ruben. You will see in the next slide, thank you, Ruben. Um, okay. The complete, thank you, the complete cycle here, we have the exploration, exploration research and action research. As regards, we focused on exploration research. Um, first of all, on the, flat, on the fact that we need to uh, plan what to explore, yes? It, we are talking, we talked about exploration and not to make any changes. Then we collected as regards exploration, uh, we uh, encouraged uh, teachers to, ex uh, to gather data to answer their own questions. And then during the last step, we encouraged them to analyze and to reflect on the data they had collected in order to answer their questions and to be able to understand the situation <laughs> better. Yes, um, uh, we... Um, uh, also uh, put emphasis on the fact that sometimes um, this is enough. Those three steps are enough, okay? Sometimes exploration uh, brings, or um, I mean, the new understanding that we gain after carrying out these three steps is enough. It may bring change and also uh, different um, 
I mean, it may uh, change the situation and may help change our attitude towards the situation. Another alternative is to go ahead and to plan in order to um, uh, implement action. Yes, and there, uh, in this slide, you can also see the different steps which have to do to uh, which have to do with uh, the um, action stage. Yes. So uh, during our workshop, as I said before, we emphasized the value of exploring. That is to say, of looking at our situation more in detail. Yes, from a different perspective. And we also uh, encouraged teacher to integrate that exploration into their everyday teaching, yes? To avoid um, uh, workload, yes? Great. Well, um, as regards um, the last question uh, or the last topic, uh, which has to do with how classroom-based uh, research contributes to uh, teacher uh, development, okay, this is research by teachers and for teachers for their professional development, their own professional development, and for the benefit of their students. Yes, this has not to do with um, any academic research, okay? And uh, so what we did during um, our session was to help teachers was to guide teachers, yes, to design and also to implement their uh, exploratory action research projects to share their findings uh, and then to share their reflections on their findings and also their goals as regards further classroom research. Yes, so Thank you very much for showing the slides, Ruben. Now it's your turn. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Nice to, to be here, and thank you for the invitation as well. Um, I would like to, well, now to, so to mention something about our roles as moderators together with Mariana and Lydia and, and the issues that we had to go through uh, in relation to the preparation of the workshop and, and the process of the preparation itself. Um, so what we did as lead moderators, uh, well, during the preparation and planning stage, we focused on first on contacting the previous moderators of previous editions of this EVO, EVO um, Richard, Ashley, for example, um, because they, they have, well, they had uh, uh, delivered the workshop before and it was a great help for us because we had some uh, content and some outline of the workshop already. Um, but anyway, we had to decide on some um, uh, platforms of sites where uh, uh, the material would be uploaded and where the teachers had to interact. As regards um, the material, we decided to um, organize the material in uh, Weebly, uh, but then we thought that that is not um, uh, friendly uh, platform to interact, so we decided to also to open uh, it, a model <clears throat> to interact with the teachers. Uh, there, uh, well, we we started interacting. We uh, disseminated the, the information about the workshop, and uh, as you can see in the slides, uh, 168 uh, teachers enrolled from uh, 59 different countries. So this was a lot, and we were very happy for this uh, number of uh, teachers interested in the workshop. However, uh, 84 teachers accessed the workshop site uh, in Edmodo at the beginning of the workshop, and 25 teachers completed the workshop. So <clears throat> there is a, a, a huge difference in numbers, um, and we are trying to, to, <clears throat> to explore uh, that that's part of our exploration. Uh, why this happened, okay? I think this is, <clears throat> we think that in part is natural in some uh, especially free workshops where teachers are interested and then for some reasons they don't start uh, interacting and they don't 
complete the, the workshop. But anyway, we are trying to, to see, to contact those teachers to explore further the reasons why they show interest, but then they did not uh, start it or complete the, the workshop. Um, uh, also, um, other uh, teachers participated in the workshop, well, as, as uh, it was mentioned before, were the, um, the, the mentors, uh, that, that we thank them a lot for their uh, work, and of course, well, the teachers uh, uh, being mentored, the mentees. Um, as Mariana mentioned, the, the, the process of exploratory actual research, these are some examples for you to have an idea of the, what uh, the interaction uh, went uh, around in the workshop that has to do with teachers um, exploring their own um, practices and their own context. Uh, as Mariana mentioned, this is not academic uh, uh, research with a capital A, let's say but uh, uh, starting from the, the classrooms of each individual teacher. So here are just uh, some examples of the topics. For example, uh, one of the teachers, Blanca Lopez, said um, she was concerned with why the majority of her students were ashamed to produce in English um, in the context of Argentina, which is uh, English as a foreign language and what other feelings are at play while speaking <clears throat> in L2. Then Mancushan Sagrolikar um, was concerned about um, their students learning a Shakespeare drama Midsummer Night in relation to vocabulary, for example. Uh, then Irina Pinuta uh, was interested in how she could engage their students uh, in, <clears throat> or how, how the, the engagement of their, her students change when she innovated in uh, her PowerPoint presentations, especially uh, introducing blank slides from time to time for reflection, for their students to reflect. So, well, um, Laura Torres about uh, particular types of oral activities. So it was interested, interesting to see that, uh, as we always say, that teachers may be from 59 different countries, from, from different contexts, but in fact, we share the same uh, core issues of t teaching in general and teaching English as a foreign language. So the topics were familiar for most of them. So they, it was a contribution also for the others. Um, then, well, the process continued with the how they could explore those issues, then uh, finding the results and then uh, what they will change in relation to what they found and then how they could share their research. Yes, um, this was also of, of great help for them because uh, it, helped, it helped them to see that uh, um, publishing is not only publishing in formal uh, um, context, but also you can share information with colleagues, etc. Um, at, at the end, just to conclude my part, um, um, we um, uh, administered a post questionnaire reflection, um, but there, there were more questions, but uh, we would like to share with you some of the questions in relation to the main benefits of the classroom based research EBO, the main difficulties related to the workshop uh, in relation to the course activities. Also, this was very um, important teaching in difficult uh, circumstances because this was, uh, uh, I mean, in general, uh, teachers reflected that, and in relation to the last item on the list, that they, they found themselves in a community of practice uh, among other, all the participants and the mentors and the moderators. And also the, the question of uh, teaching in difficult circumstances that uh, they they could see they could see yes that they their problems uh, could be solved yes even if they are in difficult circumstances if they explore and they take action in relation to those uh, issues so that's why uh, here at the end uh, this EBO enabled me uh, this is just uh, I, I took uh, um, this uh, quotation from one of the teachers this EBO enabled me to consider how to turn successes problems and other issues into research questions and act accordingly. 
So in general, we are happy with the results as moderators because uh, we, we could see that, well, mostly they show uh, good answers in response to the benefits. Uh, although, of course, there are some issues to consider that uh, Lydia now is going to mention in relation to the final reflections. Thank you. Okay, so thank you everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, good evening. Uh, thank you. So um, what I would like to comment on is in the final reflections. And uh, as we mentioned before, we have tried is to see what challenges the teachers found, those who finished, and uh, that was related to technology because we noticed, as Ruben mentioned before, that in many cases, um, teachers participated more on uh, Facebook than on Edmodo. Edmodo presented, even though it's very uh, uh, user-friendly, that was uh, somehow a problem. They didn't find their, uh, because it was divided into weeks, in small groups, and they found it difficult. So we had to guide them for them to find their each week and to solve the, the, let's say, the tasks, or at least to read the materials and to participate. They found it was a challenge. Not everyone, but in many cases. And uh, the feeling is that they feel more comfortable with uh, what is, uh, for example, social networking, such as Facebook, or when they can get the notifications in their email box which is uh, something that we need to explore yet. These final reflections are just reflections for the moment. We, are, we have not finished the exploration stage. Uh, something interesting also related to technology is uh, because it was mediated by technology, we usually do in previous EVOs and this year too, and will be forever, okay? Because that's the way it works. Um, this year we used Zoom. And Zoom has an active participation of all the attendees. And it was really interesting to see that teachers wanted to talk, wanted to participate. They found it interesting. They wanted to be active participant. But at the same time, there were many problems with the management of their settings. They didn't know, for example, how to mute and unmute their microphones which really was a kind of problem because we didn't want them to be silent. And so sometimes it was difficult to deal with. And uh, Christopher, that is our really mentor and my friend, we have been working together for many years and we created video tutorials, step-by-step -step guiding teachers to see what they needed to do, what it was necessary to do to uh, mute and unmute their microphones. And at the same time, something else that was uh, really noticeable is that the turn taking was really difficult to manage. Um, as we know in some other uh, video conferencing tool, this is not an issue because uh, all, stu all, I mean, all people attendees are silent. But our intention was that they could open their microphone and we, we wanted to have a more interactive uh, meetings. Um, so uh, another thing related to technology was uh, important and interesting and really uh, fascinating to see that when uh, teachers had the opportunity to meet in breakout rooms that were, were the small groups in Zoom, they really enjoyed talking to each other. That was really very, very, very productive. They had the opportunity to meet and talk, divide it into small groups. This is really very powerful because they have their voices heard, not only by texting or typing on a Edmodo or any or Facebook, but they also need to talk as we usually do. We teachers talk a lot. So that was really important. And technology and networking. Um, it's very interesting that teachers referred to things. On the one hand, some teachers noticed that other teachers were not working or they didn't find 
uh, uh, their task or their weeks on the platform and so they offer the volunteer to help other people so what they did the others could solve the problem and they could continue participating and they also have many contacts now that was interesting that is the social side of technology for professional development when we asked them um, because Mariana and I sent a questionnaire to those teachers who reached the end of the workshop and they um, reported they would have liked to have more guidance on how to use technology for teacher networking and um, meaningful communication. Actually, we don't know very well what meaningful communication means. Uh, personally understand, we need to explore that because we don't know that yet, but we understand that this can be the exchange from the professional point of view or at least the possibility of really talking. But I cannot say, I can, I, I'm not sure at the moment what that meaningful communication means. And then as regard finally managing information and meeting deadlines, they found that the information we provided was good and was uh, uh, enough and it was okay. Of course, we were using material that had previously proven to be great. That was Richard Smith and Paula Reboliedo as Lee and Kenan materials, which have already proved to be very, very, very useful and successful. And uh, some videos also uh, by the same authors, so that was proved that was okay. And teachers uh, reported that was very good. But they found uh, that they couldn't meet the deadlines in many cases, and particularly research questions and analyzing data is the most uh, noticeable, or at least to pay attention for the next time. Probably we need to uh, find a way to provide more guidance there, uh, because that was the, the area which shows more interest or more need, let's say. So thank you, that was the end on my side. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, we do have, this is a very crowded uh, session. Uh, we have every 20 minutes a session going up for two hours into this. So I want to thank you all very much. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to interject anything else here. We don't want to really cut off interaction. Going once, twice, okay. All right. Well, yes, anybody? Okay, I don't think so. Listen, if, uh, if you're not speaking, please mute your microphone. Most people are taking care of that. I'm also able to see in the, uh, in the chat who has a microphone on, and I can just mute them. Uh, okay, so that seems to be managed quite well. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, there are 54 people here, which is quite nice. There's 100 people allowed in this room. And so what I'd like to do now is to welcome uh, Richard and uh, they, uh, my iPad just went off, say then, I believe, and uh, ask you if you would like to uh, give your uh, presentation now. Sure, thanks. Um, Sedan, are you there as well? Hi, Sedan. Yeah, I'm here, Richard. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Um, well, hi, everyone. And um, um, just to say at the beginning that um, I wasn't going to be going to the TESOL conference. I haven't, I've never been to the TESOL conference um, at all. But um, Denver, um, in my mind, has got an association with um, Jack Kerouac on the road. I don't know, I don't know, can't remember what he did there or why, what, how that was in the story. But that was a story of um, great kind of freedom and sense of uh, opportunity. And here we are. All I wish lockdown. I could be skiing there. This is my... Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I don't know Denver, but uh, I can imagine it. And I would, I would never have been there. Uh, I wouldn't, probably wouldn't have been doing this um, online one either, Vance. But um, it, it's paradox for me that we are all in lockdown, which we have to recognize the, the situation as you did in your introduction. But there's a paradox for me here that we are here and I feel really close to so many of you um, through this great EVO. 
um, that we have, and this is now the bigger EV, EVO community, but because we um, decided to have the two presentations following on from each other, the first one from um, Mariana Ruben and um, Lydia, of course, I've been very associated with the classroom-based research, and the one that we did, we started this year um, with Seden, the mentoring teacher research. This is one really one family that has grown up um, over the last five years, and as Asla is with us as well, who were with Kenan was they were the first ones to take on the Evo um, adventure. And I'm not a techie person at all, but the I can really see the benefits of technology. And hmm, I wouldn't say I feel really comfortable, but I, as as I think um, Jane was saying at the beginning, uh, it or maybe it was Nelly actually it was saying that because of Eva we feel more comfortable. Maybe we'll talk about that with Zedan a little bit later with technology. Anyway, we can see the we can see the opportunities. And don't you think that you know now more than ever we. We, we value this kind of connection and collaboration uh, that we are in isolation and, and lockdown. So I just wanted to start with that kind of reflection of where we are. Um, personally, I've been um, involved with um, helping my, well, my students, especially do, on MAT Seoul at Warwick University in the UK over, over many years to do small action research projects. And I've seen the value of action research, of practitioner research, teacher research, whatever you like to see it as a way of a way of that students, students, teachers, but also teachers, uh, practice, practicing teachers, including myself, can feel a sense of empowerment, uh, develop a sense of being more in control of their development, and have valued it very highly. Uh, I got the personally the opportunity to get more involved with teachers in various countries in, in the global south, um, in, engaging in kind of programs to try to engage secondary school teachers who, who have been very neglected in this area of practitioner research in relatively large numbers also. Some of the schemes that existed to engage teachers in practitioner research were rather small small groups in rather privileged situations. So something that's happened over, I think, over the last um, six, seven years has been a real kind of movement outside the EVO in general in different programs um, uh, in Latin America in particular, the Champion Teachers Program, but also what Ruben and Anna and colleagues are doing in, in um, with the teachers in Buenos Aires, province of Buenos Aires, then spreading across from Chile to to um, Peru and Colombia and, and growing sort of movement of teachers, often with us, we should acknowledge the support of the, of the British Council. Um, also in India, again, British Council programs and Nepal, which I've been more recently engaged in. And the ones in, in India and Nepal have very interestingly involved um, mentors, mentors having groups of teachers and there being a program of trying to um, trying to um, develop those mentors' abilities to mentor, facilitate practitioner research. I've become increasingly involved involved in that area. So I've, I've been increasingly sort of um, reflecting on how can we help mentors to mentor, facilitate teachers to do teacher research. Because that kind of structure that a mentor can provide, whether it's in student with student teachers or with uh, in-service teachers, or maybe just a teacher with a colleague, providing a structure for a teacher who hasn't engaged in practitioner research and to, uh, with different skills of kind of listening, questioning um, is necessary really and it, when teachers take their first steps into doing practitioner research. And it's also, um, we've just been, become aware that there are more and more people beginning to or wanting to become engaged as facilitators or, or mentors as we call it of, of teacher research. I think um, if you don't mind me saying so, you know, we have um, Mariana, for who was presenting as, as a great example, uh, somebody who I, I first met in Argentina, who was doing her own practitioner research and becoming empowered through that, if you don't mind me saying that, Mariana, and, and wanting to go further and actually wanting to help other teachers. And this is exactly what she's been doing in the last, in the EVO classroom research last year and the previous year. And now she's taking on with Lydia and Ruben a gr an even greater role of, of, of coordinating. Um, the classroom-based research EVO. Okay, I became conscious that there's very little actually out there about how we can help 
um, mentors, how we can develop and mentoring. And uh, I wrote a book for the British Council. It's not been published, but it's coming out. And this is part is partly my stimulus for wanting to get together with Sedan um, to see if we could do something for growing numbers of people um, becoming involved or interested in in mentoring teacher research. And so then uh, maybe introduce your own background, if you know, Elizabeth. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Sedan Eral Demir Tuyan, uh, and I have been working in English language teaching field for more than 25 years. And um, during the time, I have worked as an EFL instructor, as a staff developer, and currently I'm working as a teacher educator at English teaching uh, department uh, at Chai University in Turkey. And uh, as for my mentoring uh, teacher research history, uh, my story began uh, back in time, six years ago at Chipro University, uh, where I was working as a staff developer. And when we started our uh, in-service action research program for continuous professional development. And I mentored three instructor groups uh, over there. And I believe, and based on the feedback I received from the groups, uh, we, you know, grew, grew together as a professional learning community. And we had the, the, uh, the chance to disseminate our work to different ITFL research state publications. And since 2017, uh, I started working as a teacher educator. Uh, I'm teaching mainly methodology courses, professional development and action research to undergraduate and graduate students. And in my current teaching context, as part of my course requirements, I engage student teachers and MA students with exploratory action research projects and do my own way of mentoring. I believe uh, conducting action research studies help them to grow, uh, to grow a growth mindset, keep learning and keeping self-aware and take action to improve their students' learning. And back to you, Richard. That's all okay, about cool. me. Thanks, Adam. So, um, apart from acknowledging, um, as we did the British Council earlier, and also um, strongly sort of acknowledging Vance and um, Christina, uh, Nelly, and all of all of you who've given us this sort of structure of um, ability to make these communities uh, with such um, helpfulness, actually. Um, thank you so much. Um, but also, we, I think we should acknowledge actually what Sedan said, the, the IOTFL um, Research Special Interest Group has, um, over, over the years, has given a lot of support actually to the EVO. And, and Kenan, of course, is not here, but Asla, uh, within the one thing that we've always used in that classroom-based research, EVO, that, that um, wow. Marianne and the others were talking about, has been the Adobe, an Adobe Connect Room, which IOTFL Research SIG has generously um, allowed us to use. That's been very useful. Actually, you didn't use that last year, but we, we have used that. And we've used that for our uh, mentoring teacher research. Actually, Richard, I, I needed to say that uh, the, the project uh, was in, initiated by uh, Kenan Dikilik yeah. Fresh, yeah. and we just uh, held on to that for two yeah. years. And during the time, um, I received uh, huge mentoring and support by some celebrity super mentors like yourself, Richard Smith, and Andy Kivitaj, let's talk about them, and Burns, you know, Mark Wyatt, thanks to them all from here. So there's all these people we want to thank. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, we like it's not, being It's not the Oscars, so let's, uh, I guess people there want to, well, this is how well, we feel. Yeah, right? she was we part of the team, thank you, Asla. So I think everybody, some would, would like to hear about what we did really, a bit more about um, the approach that we took. So I'm going to share, I'm not going to share any PowerPoints, but I hope you can see um, this is the main sort of area that we have been using. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology side of things and the, uh, the platform side of things, but also the, um, the syllabus. Um, you can see that okay, I think, Sedan, can you? Yeah, very well. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, 
we, we have a Facebook group and that's where we encourage people to come as a sort of waiting room. And that's something we've done over the last years, also in that classroom based research Evo to before the whole Evo starts to have a Facebook group place where people can get ready or sort of start to prepare themselves. And then and that carries on all through the year. And this is where our community is, is still going to develop the community of, of mentors around the world of teacher research. But when we when we actually start, um, we make we make a link. We decided to use groups.io. Of course, we used to use Google Plus for the classroom based research one, but that's no longer available. So with the helpful discussions that that all, all moderators have before they start with Vance and with all of the, the team, um, we heard about groups.io and that's what we decided to use. Um, um, let me just find it again. So we decided to, I think, I'm not sure, but I may be wrong, but I think other EVOs used it, groups.io this year, um, as, a, as, the, as the main place for, for, a, for a forum for exchanging messages and it certainly worked quite well for that purpose. But we decided to go one step further and actually use it as our main place for content as well. Because from experience, um, we found that, as I think Lydia was saying, that people have to get used to the technology and often get lost in the technology. So we wanted just one place where people could be. So we decided to use the wiki for, um, and there, I've, I've provided a link to this um, this whole thing in the on the main uh, website for today's presentations um, just just so pe people are interested and you can actually go here and you can look at the um, it's not usually open it's just for members but um, for anybody here who would like to go and see our, what we did each week you can also see we had a week before everything began just where we started getting people used to the place and um, that's something we found worked with classroom based research Evo last few years as well so when we actually started, you can see the syllabus um, beginning here. The first week was reflections on what 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 is not so much what is teacher research. We assumed that people coming to us knew what that is. Um, it's a quite a specialised Evo. We didn't expect to have many people. Um, in the end, we had about 100 people or a little bit more. But um, the reflections during that week, um, so you can see that we had a webinar and you can have the, rec the recording is there in the Adobe Connect. But then, of course, we follow up with different discussion topics and the um, we make the link to the to the place in the messages uh, board. Um, so that was the first week it was basically kind of definitions and getting getting to know each other. Um, and we go back to the wiki um, week two, then we, we decided to focus on areas which we know from experience are the most difficult for teachers who are engaging in teacher research and how can mentors help the help the teachers um, to develop their topic to narrow down a topic to develop research questions then um, how can you help teachers to decide what kind of data is appropriate how can you help teachers to to just to analyze the data and interpret it and um, towards the end we were thinking also about how can you help teachers um, share their findings. Um, so we had different tasks from the materials that I've, I've, I've been preparing. Just focus in on this week, which was, you know, it's a really difficult area for teachers to decide on a particular topic to research and decide on their research questions. So we had a webinar, that's me and Sethen, and we had a, we always had a guest mentor. Uh, we called it a surprise guest mentor because we didn't tell people who it was going to be. I think that week it was actually Kenan Dikilitas or actually Elizabeth from Bekesh maybe. Who, who joined us from Ecuador. Um, Paola also joined us one week. Paola Rebiador from Chile. We, we'd have some reading. This is from the book that's going to be coming out, um, made available in the files area. So that's what we have here. We have files. So there's also an activity they could do. And uh, there's also this, we encourage them to actually go and find somebody. And I think some of them, some people did manage to do this, find a teacher who might be willing to do teacher research Go and um, record a conversation with them where you're helping them to decide on a topic and decide on research questions and um, listen back to it to analyze it. Actually, Jane was suggesting that we can do that these days more easily with um, people teaching online. That's something we would like to reflect on how this relates to 
teaching online. We're not going to have time really, but we'd like to do that. Um, so if we just go to the files area, you can see, and you can you can do this, explore this for yourselves if you'd like to later. Um, week one, you see we put the materials there. Um, we had a list of challenges that there might be in mentoring teacher research, um, a checklist of skills and abilities. Um, that was week one. I'm just going to look at week two. Um, and I suppose we have five more minutes, roughly, do we, Vance? five minutes or so um uh, well you could well we're, we're a bit over time but then we yeah, ran over little... time so it should be probably about time you should be ending but take five minutes uh -huh. it's okay we're not all right then. in a big um, in so, place. So, so we were going to sort of i was going to try and mentor sedan having a kind of having a kind of conversation um a little bit like this one where you can see what kinds of question or what kinds of active listening i might do so then tell us a little bit about the um, how the participants responded or what the, how the participants, who they were and how they found our, our EVO. And maybe we'll end with that. Uh, actually, we have had uh, 148 registered participants from various parts of the world, uh, from Greece, Azerbaijan, Argentina, Nepal, you know, Ecuador, UK, Turkey, from various parts of the world. And they have tried mentoring uh, um, in both in, in service and pre-service context. Uh, one of our uh, participant mentors uh, held a study, uh, actually multi-level collaborative study with uh, the other teachers in her team, you know, which was a success I believe. And other than that, um, well, shall I um, talk about um, the participants' gains and things like that, Richard? Yeah, I think that's a good thing to end with. Yeah, because we have time constraints. Uh, yeah. it's, I think it's good to uh, give some feedback. Uh, our participants enjoy uh, sharing of material, resources, uh, webinars, uh, and they found them uh, really helpful, fruitful, and useful. Uh, they enjoy being part of the group. Uh, they also felt confident and feel confirmed uh, as being part of the group. Uh, most of the participant mentors um, uh, just gave it as a feedback. Uh, our uh, mentoring sessions as an opportunity uh, to interact with different participants from all around the world, different regions of the world, and talk about exchange gene experiences. And well, it was a community for all of us to change, uh, exchange ideas. Uh, other than that, do you have um, other things in mind? How about you? What did you feel was the most benefit for you to, with this experience? Uh, well, uh, Richard, I, I, I gained a lot actually. Uh, uh, during the time I co-hosted this uh, EVO research sessions. And first of all, uh, I can say I gained a deeper understanding and a wider perspective uh, in uh, mentoring teachers. I think this, is, this was uh, my most important gain. Uh, I also think about the collegiality issue here, uh, the culture we try to create through uh, this uh, cohesive, I can say, uh, professional relationships. Uh, so we had the chance, all of us uh, had the chance to hear from participant mentors. And I also have the chance uh, to fill in the gaps I have had in my mentoring model and mentoring philosophy. Uh, in this way, I confirmed myself, you know, sometimes I adjusted my way of thinking while hearing from our uh, participants. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, finally, I can say, 
I learned a lot from your expert knowledge, uh, your practical, to the point, mindedness, I can say, uh, mentoring during the preparation of the content of our session. And our exchange of ideas made me question myself and improve. Thanks, Sedan. And uh, it's true, isn't How it? How about Every... you, Richard? Well, <laughs> have have <laughs> you had any games? <laughs> okay, briefly, um, because we don't want to, we know others are waiting to present. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah. When you're planning something together, I guess others feel the same way. And I, I think this is very much in the nature of Evo philosophy generally. It's a collaborative, I think, Christine said earlier, very collaborative. Um, you're planning something really genuinely together out of a voluntary spirit, not not because you have to do it. Um, yeah, exactly. you, gain a, you gain a lot. And we learn a lot. Um, I, I learned that actually there are more people out there than I hoped, really, who are interested in becoming mentors of teacher research, which was fantastic. I think it's like a, a spiral, a uh, virtuous circle happening. Um, and secondly, I suppose I did have these materials and I, I'd written them myself on the basis of my experience. I wanted to validate them, see if they made sense for other people. And there are a lot of things that people were adding and saying that were things that I was learning about the un underexplored area that we are working in here. You're, you're one of the few people who've written about the experience of mentoring teacher research. That's why we're working together. Um, but it's, it's a developing area. So we're, I think we have a sense of not just a community, uh, which I've been stressing, but of being at a kind of cutting edge of not just working online, but um, in this area. Thanks. Uh, that's all we have time, time for. I uh, hope you Unfortunately, it. we yeah. couldn't have the mentoring dialogue. Uh, Next time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. In, in 2008, when uh, George Siemens and Stephen Downs uh, gave their first MOOC, the Connective and Connectivist Knowledge MOOC, uh, someone asked Stephen, because they did this as a, uh, as a course at a university where they had a couple of hundred participants, but they opened up to everybody, and they suddenly got inundated with thousands of people, and someone asked Stephen, why are you doing this? You know, And he said, well, because I'll learn from it. There you are. You see, that's really why we're here, I think. You know, we're all learning from one another. I really appreciate your presentation. And in the interest in time, I appreciate you looking at that. We're about 10 minutes over time, but that's not critical. You know, we're not a train running or whatever. So uh, anyway, I think we have next uh, Daniela and Letizia uh, talking about Technoclil. And oh, just let me point out again, if uh, anybody is not using a mic, please mute your mic. And people have been very well behaved so far. It's been a very nice session. And I see that Daniela is there and Letizia, there you are. How are you? Yeah, ready? yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Hi. Here we are. You're on. Hi. Shall I <laughs> share my screen once? Sure, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. First of all, thank you very much for inviting us and organizing this uh, presentation today because for us it is very important, especially for me. I'm second vice president of TIS of Italy. My president and second vice president had already planned to be in Denver this time. So everyone all around the world, you can imagine how disappointing it is to cancel pro, uh, programs just due to this uh, pandemia. And uh, we are very sorry for that, but it is a way to stay together and to widespread a little bit of our experts is to, to help people that are facing such a very difficult moment in the time, especially my thoughts are for teachers and trainers all over the world that are um, making a new experience of digital teaching uh, in their classrooms. So together with uh, Letizia Cinganotto, uh, today, today, this year we had uh, another session of uh, Teclocleal. Uh, Teclocleal is is um, something that refers uh, uh, to the widespreading of the CLIL methodology all around the world, this tongue content and language integrated learning. And uh, as you can see in this uh, screenshot, 
uh, screenshot of UDDC 2015-16 uh, uh, program. Uh, we have uh, the, the widespread of this methodology all over Europe, uh, both because it is a way of enhancing language skills. But we taught and we have been uh, teaching uh, this uh, new methodology all over the years uh, in the last six editions of uh, EVO, Electronic Village Online, uh, together with technologists, uh, because we are digital experts and we really believe that uh, um, in the 21st uh, century it is very important uh, uh, to enhance uh, digital skills uh, both for teachers and uh, students. And so we, we've just we found this uh, mixture of uh, enhancing and developing uh, uh, digital skills with uh, uh, language and content methodological skills. Uh, we also published uh, after with uh, the um, five uh, editions of Technocleal uh, a very important uh, edition of uh, our program. So it is the Technocleal uh, doing a, a CLIL in a digital way with uh, the, the publishing uh, Technocleal. Uh, we started in uh, 2014. We had already been experts for EVO uh, with some uh, different programs uh, for promoting uh, personal learning environments editions in uh, during three uh, different editions but we had a great success because uh, CLIL became compulsory in Italy so lots of teachers especially from Italy joined the program because they wanted to know and uh, to learn something more on how to uh, develop and enhance uh, this new uh, methodology and so we had uh, in um, from uh, since then up to the, the to this year the uh, six different editions. The one we are referring to now is, uh, as in the previous editions, of course, we changed them a lot because at the beginning it was for beginners. And so we had to widespread the ABC steps of this methodology, then having always the same participants and enlarging our community, we had to differentiate our syllables but more or less we have um, maintained uh, the, 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 the basic framework uh, all, always adding a new uh, hints and new um, inputs and new um, examples of uh, how to implement it. Uh, the, the syllabus is based on uh, as every uh, massive online course on uh, five weeks that uh, um, uh, focus on the widespreading of CLIL all around the world and then on the focus of language because we don't want to have only to teach the subject or also the language and then as the uh, Letizia will uh, um, explain later on on the uh, pluriliteracies and clean planning according to the European Center for Modern Languages uh, uh, design and how to give examples of uh, debate CLIL as one of the main essential aspects of CLIL is communication, debate is a very important methodology, and then how to share uh, repositories in uh, the perspective of uh, building together a learning community of CLIL and how to um, uh, give examples of uh, uh, video recordings and lessons. As you can see, we have people uh, coming from all over the world because it, the CLIL methodology is not only uh, stuck to the uh, Italian uh, situation but it is an international and um, European uh, aspect that we have to, to face in our schools. Um, of course we based our course on uh, enhancing and refreshing at different levels how uh, the technical essential can be developed inside the courses and we also also consider the forces uh, aspects uh, uh, proposed by the uh, expert uh, called in uh, in Europe that are cognition culture content and communication we also tried uh, to enhance a metacognitive process because we think that it is very important both for students and for uh, teachers to reflect on what we do in our classes and we did this in a very particular way because we do think that 
one of the best and main competencies in the 20th century in, uh, century is uh, to promote uh, visual competencies and so we chose uh, infographics uh, to both to learn and uh, to represent uh, the process of learning uh, by our teachers through infographics uh, please feel um, please uh, here are some uh, have a look at some examples of what we realized um, the, the learning diary was uh, one of our, um, the tool, uh, tools uh, that we used uh, during our experience. Uh, so teachers had to, to reflect uh, in a magnacognitive way uh, on their thoughts and uh, they had to uh, represent it uh, through a visual. Uh, so all uh, during all uh, the five weeks, uh, stu uh, teachers had to, to, uh, to give uh, some examples of what they had learned uh, through each step. Uh, then another example is uh, uh, the four C's, as I mentioned before, by a very uh, participant, a very um, uh, engaged participant, Barbara Ansaldi, who uh, just gave the idea of how the four skills could be exploited, also through a mind map. Not only the four skills uh, uh, seen as communication, content, culture, recognition, but also giving examples of what what communication meant for us. There was a language of learning, language for learning, a language of true learning, and a cognitive processes, a content implied in our research, and of course, the culture of the target language uh, referred to this topic. So this was um, done by, handmade done, but it was very uh, powerful <laughs> uh, to express the meaning of all this. And then we also asked a teacher teachers uh, to reflect on what they did uh, during their classes, uh, designing and planning a uh, uh, lesson uh, and uh, also representing uh, the, the, the situation. So through a digital storytelling uh, way, they could uh, give us the idea of what was going on in uh, their classrooms, uh, always uh, um, respecting uh, the, the uh, standard planning of planning the project, presentation, discussion, practice and collaboration, investigation, and of course, assessment. And last but not least, uh, authentic tasks, uh, because we also asked our teachers uh, to use visuals and infographics and graphic organizers uh, to give an idea of what was going on in their classroom. So you're always using a, a Web 2.0 web to tools on the uh, web to, um, software, uh, creativity software, so to uh, uh, just to represent uh, authentic tasks in their classrooms. So uh, this is the first part of my uh, presentation. I'll give the floor to Letizia. Letizia, are you here? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Okay, okay. okay. And now Thanks. you can go on. Okay, tell me please, oh, I, I have to go on with different yes, slides. Okay. Huh? Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, Vance, for this great opportunity. Uh, thank you very much. So I'm going on with this, the description of the, the different um, uh, weeks that uh, we uh, developed in Technoclear. So this week was, was devoted to the Plural Literacy uh, Project, which is a, um, a project promoted by the ECML, the European Center of Modern Languages in Graz, uh, working on um, projects on languages and um, uh, in uh, CLIL and uh, um, plurilingualism. And this project is um, uh, pluriliteracy teaching on deeper learning uh, led by uh, Dukoy, Lolina Meyer, Kevin Schuck. Um, and I'm part of the consultancy team, um, uh, which is a sort of um, a new idea of CLIL focusing on pluriliteracy. So the wide range of literacies that uh, our students in 21st century um, need to develop. And um, so um, we uh, also used the, uh, planning a tool um, of this project um, to um, as a tool for our participants to uh, plan um, clear uh, pathways um, according to the different uh, this 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 is one of the um, uh, this this will is one of the tools of the, the project so we um, of course um, have our, at our participants uh, explore the different aspects of the project and in particular this tool um, that has different uh, items and uh, 
um, provides guidelines on how to plan um, a clear pathway um, uh, in, in a certain in a certain way so we, we collected all the different um, uh, plans um, by um, our teachers our participants yes next please uh, Daniela Yes, debate and CLEL was um, uh, the highlight of um, um, the, this, this week, uh, the fourth week. Um, as Daniela was saying, uh, debate is um, uh, a very powerful teaching uh, strategy that um, we are, we are um, spreading a lot in Italy, for example, but is um, uh, international, is very, at international level, is, is very is well known. Um, we have there are a lot of tournament in the States and in, uh, uh, we know in, in um, uh, uh, in, in England in, uh, uh, and um, the, in Italy as well, we have the uh, national just um I mean, since 2017, we have um, national um, uh, uh, competition uh, on, on debate. And um, uh, so we, uh, we thought that working on debate for CLIL um, could be a nice opportunity for um, our teachers to experiment this um, teaching technique uh, with their students. So uh, in order to um, develop, of course, not only language competencies, but also their thinking skills and uh, public speaking, or that's behind um, debate. And in particular, we'll also focused on writing skills for debate and we provided suggestions about um, uh, um, organized uh, writing um, uh, debates through uh, specific uh, platforms uh, there are specific platforms that can uh, help you um, uh, organize this uh, you know um, different um, uh, sessions uh, and so students can can write can uh, uh, so not only speaking a debate but also writing debates and so we uh, provided uh, our participants with different suggestions on how to organize uh, a debate in their um, classes uh, for CLIL of course as, as an effective way to implement CLIL in their classes Yes, the next one, Daniela, please. Okay, the clear repositories is was the last um, uh, the last week, and this in particular, this um, uh, repositories, uh, this repository, I mean, this section um, has turned out to be very helpful, very useful for our teachers, especially now in this uh, period where they are forced to be, uh, of course, to be home and um, uh, their students as well. So, in in uh, remote um, uh, teaching, um, they found this particularly useful. In fact, we uh, um, uh, first of all, we um, provided um, uh, um, uh, with suggestions and inputs on uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, repositories uh, for CLIL in different languages that they could, uh, you know, um, find ready-made because there are um, uh, a lot of resources. So uh, what we did was to uh, guide um, uh, our teachers in finding all these um, resources and put them together uh, so that it could. Um, um, have somehow a sort of pathway, clear pathways uh, for different topics uh, already made. Um, and then they, um, and then we asked them to create their own repository. So uh, just, um, uh, you know, using, of course, um, uh, their, their own um, a web tool or their um, website or, or what they, they preferred, um, we uh, suggested um, uh, them to, to create their own repository for their particular uh, subject, of course, and um, having in mind, of course, their, their specific uh, teaching context. And uh, that, that's what I say uh, they um, found particularly uh, useful for, for this period, where they are just suggesting and maybe assigning resources to, uh, to their students' um, uh, home and uh, uh, in this way. Way, everything is easier for, for them, uh, especially in, in this period. Um, the next one, I think, was the uh, the last um, is the um, yes the, the, the webinars and the social networks and the tools that we of course it was um, um, this this combination between CLIL and digital. So the um, uh, that's why techno CLIL the two aspects together. Um, we try to exploit all the different aspects of technologies of the net, so the social network and uh, all possible web tools of course we we try to uh, um, to give them an idea of um, uh, the, the, the wide range of tools that are available online because of course we know that they're, they're always increasing but um, you know, we try to, to to give some some hints on how to you know to look for um, the best or the proper uh, tools that could fit their particular needs we had also um, webinars um, uh, with clear experts um, actually we we had um, um, uh, a lot of webinars in the previous editions 
um, there were so many and um, we found uh, that uh, the, 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 the very interesting um, the, the contact you know the sort of video lectures with um, uh, experts on clear or on digital aspect and we we recorded in the past we video recorded all these these webinars and uh, so we could make um, available uh, to the um, participants in the um, uh, next editions um, uh, we could make these these recordings available um, and this was another uh, important aspect that we could um, uh, collect from, um, from from the past editions so to have a sort of uh, um, in fact we have our uh, YouTube channel, our uh, TechnoClear YouTube channel, when, which is a sort of encyclopedia of all these these webinars on TechnoClear, uh, and especially in the first edition, Nelly um, uh, Deutsch helped us a lot. So, and thank you again, Nelly, for for helping us in, the, uh, especially at the beginning. And um, and so um, we could say that this TechnoClear is for us a sort of a small treasure um, that, of course, we we always suggest our teachers when, uh, especially in Italy or also in. Um, in other international events, when Daniel and I have presentations on conferences, we, we have something that we can, you know, we can uh, um, suggest as a sort of a reference uh, with tools and other materials that could be uh, helpful for teachers. Um, I think it's, uh, it's yes, the, the end of our presentation. This is, yes, uh, the, um, the book that is in Italian that we published with the, um, uh, it's um, uh, an Italian, is an Italian, is an Italian publisher um, uh, uh, that um, uh, collects, uh, of, of course, in, in Italian, um, some of the uh, highlights of the, the different editions of Technoclear. Um, and of course, it's um, uh, addressed to Italian teachers who want to start uh, planning and implementing CLEL in their classes. Thank you very much. And thank you once again for this opportunity. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I hope that Maha is okay with a slightly late start. Does anybody have any question they'd like to ask uh, Daniela and Letizia? Maybe we could take one. People do have the possibility of taking a mic and asking a question. You certainly, um, yes, go ahead. Letizia, is, is there, um, are you, go, is there um, any publications in English that we can read about your experience in CLIL in Italy? Uh, yes, I clearly in Italy, in particular, I wrote um, an article in English um, uh, on um, uh, La Clel, uh, which is the um, international, I guess you know it, the international from uh, Sabana University. Um, uh, if you look for um, Clel in Italy, uh, a general overview, um, Letizia Cinganotto, you can find this article. But uh, Daniel and I have uh, written uh, many other articles in, uh, in English as well on, on Clel and uh, Clel and technologies. So I guess. Uh, that if you Google us, <laughs> you, you, can, okay. you can find uh, different articles. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. Okay, and if anybody wants, to, any presenters or anybody wants to put anything in the text chat, the text chat will be blogged, so you'll be able to read it. So uh, if you have any questions there or any information you want to put in the text chat, it will be preserved. So, okay. And I would also, I'm also writing um, uh, my email address and Daniela's email address. So if you want to contact us, feel free. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We're a little over time, not that bad. We're uh, 10 minutes or so. So we have th uh, two more presenters, Maha and Nelly. And we have actually three presentations because Nelly is so prolific. She's uh, got her involved in so many EVO sessions. But uh, right now, uh, Maha. Hassan talking about CEFR versus assessment. Uh, are you it used to be called Are you a fair tester? But Maha, yeah. are you? Yeah, there you are. Okay. Oh, yeah. and just let me say, what, the the group has been very nice, very well well behaved, and muting when they're not talking. That's very helpful. We certainly appreciate that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, Maha, you Shall have the I floor. Go ahead? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Maha, Thank you. Maha Hassan. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Hello, everybody. I hope you are safe and you are staying home. <laughs> I hope everything is fine with you. I will try to share my screen now. Can you see this? Can you see, can, can yes. you see the, my screen? Yes. Yeah. Hello, once more. How are you? 
Um, 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 it's a pleasure always to be with EVO and thank you Vance and thank you Nelly and thank you all the team of EVO for always inviting us and for all the great efforts that they do in order to keep us online all the time. Uh, today I'm going to speak about suffer versus assessment. Uh, I'm speaking about the different kinds of revisions, the latest revisions that took place by the beginning of 2018. And um, um, I have given this uh, uh, session uh, to, uh, twice, last year and this year, again. Uh, and I find that lots of people are so much interested in it that because they would like to know about this idea of the assessment and how and, uh, they would like to discover the new suffer and uh, how they can use it to help them with the assessment. Because sometimes people so, get so much involved with different systems or methods of assessment and they don't know how to get along with it and apply it in class. So the most interesting thing about the new revisions of SEFR is that they have clarified uh, or uh, drew a kind of um, mind map for the teachers to help them how to go ahead with applications of uh, the assessments in class. Uh, so we have uh, given this uh, session, uh, in, uh, we have divided them among the five weeks of the EVO. Uh, we started first with uh, uh, giving uh, lessons to the teachers and asking them to try to uh, reflect on them and try to decide what kind of uh, objectives for these lessons are there. That's what we start with. But before we started with this as well, we started with asking them to reflect on the old Sefer and try to give their uh, own reflections on it and uh, if they have already applied them in their classes and what are the challenges that uh, have faced them before. Uh, and then uh, that was on the first week. And then uh, we moved on to the idea, to the discussion of what is the Sefer. And of course, it's the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. And then we discuss with them the history, the very short history of the Sefer. How did it start? Uh, what about the first uh, version of the Sefer? And uh, uh, how uh, was it applied? How did the people take took a look to it? And uh, as you can see here in the screen on this slide, that um, uh, as we already know, that the Sefer is already divided into the six sections uh, of beginner, elementary, intermediate, upper, intermediate, advanced, and expert uh, with an A, B, and C. Uh, and then uh, we gave them this kind of definition as a kind of um, access for uh, the whole five weeks of the session, uh, which is that the SEFR is fundamentally a tool to assist in the planning of curricula, courses and examinations by working backwards from what the learners or users need to be able to do. And we asked them to focus on this idea of need to be able to do. Why are we using the SEFR? Because we would like to discover more about the levels of our own uh, students and how we can help them uh, to develop using the language uh, through their own needs, through their own levels. What is our objective with any kind of curriculum or course that we are using and how far uh, do we want them to proceed or to achieve uh, by the end of, of the course or the lesson or the unit that we are already uh, giving for them. Uh, we went on and started uh, giving them the um, definition for what is the scale and what's a descriptor and uh, we told them that uh, of um, applying the suffer to the four skills of the English language which are the listening speaking reading and writing they started applying them uh, into four macro skills which are the general competencies the communicative language competencies the communicative language activities and the communicative language strategies this is how the new suffer added to the old one uh, with the new one uh, they uh, they worked on the four the general competencies we worked with them on the general competencies and we explained what was meant by the four items included under the general competencies which is savoir savoir means knowledge savoir faire means if they get the knowledge, how do we help them practice using this knowledge and savoir at how they are going to use it to speak about different topics and then savoir upon how are they going to apply it to their own personal lives, how they can reflect it uh, personally. So we started with this on the very first week and uh, we discussed with them how these can be reflected through the communicative language competences using linguistics means the different structures of the grammar sociolinguistic, how to use the grammar in order to speak about different social uh, topics, and then pragmatic, how to reflect it on their personal lives. So we started with this introduction on the very first week, 
And on the second week, we started discussing the receptive activities. You know that uh, in the past, the sefer was uh, reflected only through the four skills of the language, the listening, speaking, reading, and writing. But uh, with the new revisions of the sefer, they just gathered them into receptive skills, productive skills, and they added two uh, to them, which are the interaction and the mediation. And they have um, set the interaction and the mediation as the common link between the four skills of the English language. Uh, so with the very first week, uh, second week, sorry, we started discussing the receptive activities. And uh, what about the different ideas of the receptive activities, which have to do with the listening and the reading, how they can use it in their classes using different activities. We uh, have applied this uh, with them on different ideas from different books. And uh, we... I discussed with, with them and uh, some of the uh, attendees uh, had some kind of experience which they try to discuss through these ideas and uh, we try to help them to find their way out through the different challenges that they are ha they had in their own uh, classes. Uh, that was uh, during the second week. During the third week we discussed the productive activities again uh, for speaking and for writing and we discussed the different again activities that could be used in class and how we can relate the productive and uh, this uh, the receptive and the productive activities to interaction. Interaction, again, was very highly stressed with the new revisions of the Sefer because they have been uh, encouraging teachers to use different activities and different um, kinds of um, interaction and group work and pair work inside the class in order to help the students to use the language to express different ideas and to personalize their own experiences in order to develop the usage of the language. On the third week, we started working, on, uh, as I said, on the productive activities and we related them to the interactive uh, interaction and the very important point, which is mediation. Mediation was found before in the old clear, but it Uh, and by this idea of the mediation uh, concerning the new suffer, they relate, they wanted the teachers to stress highly on the idea of uh, mediation, which is the text. What kind of text, what kind of medium are you helping your students with the language, to, uh, to, uh, sorry, to, uh, to use the language and to personalize it, to speak about it and develop their four skills. So they, um, they stress the idea of mediation. We have to be very careful what kind of, uh, of texts are we going to use. Are we going to use texts uh, from a book, a poem? Uh, are we going to use some kind of listening? Uh, uh, are we going to use a video? Whatever we are going to use, this is called a, a text, a medium. A medium. And through this medium, uh, we are going to discuss different concepts and how are these concepts going to be done through collaborating in a group and leading group work. They have stressed this very much. As, as if you do remember that these reflect part of the HOTS, which are the high order thinking skills of uh, Bloom's taxonomy. And so they have highlighted this very much on during the new revisions of, uh, uh, of the of the Sefer, and they have stressed also on the idea of communication and interaction. In addition, of course, to the usual strategies means the different methodologies that can be used. So through the first three weeks, we have discussed the new changes of the receptive and the productive activities together with, uh, in relation to the interaction and the mediation, uh, which have been highly stressed by, um, uh, by uh, the new revisions or the new companion revisions of uh, uh, clean. Uh, a very important point was also added, and this is how um, the new revisions have been set, the descriptors. This is a very interesting example. Here we have the different levels of the language, and uh, we have concerning mediation, they have start, as I said, mediating the text, mediating concepts, mediating communication, and they have uh, set different kinds of levels over here, giving the students the chance to say, I can convey simple predictive information. I can convey main points. I can convey information. So as you can see, the way the, these kind of descriptors were written can be used by teachers to help the students to make self-reflection, their self-assessment after giving different lessons. So the teacher can change this into a kind of questionnaire to help her uh, or help him in order to uh, reflect uh, on the work done inside the class and try to assess what the students have already done 
and by the end of the class or the end of the week or whatever, the teacher can use this as a kind of self-assessment, help the students to reflect on their own work, how far have they benefited uh, in order to realize where are they and where they are supposed to go. Another example over here also, which is very nice, which has been added again to the new suffer changes of the suffer, is the online interaction. Uh, and as uh, we have, uh, Richard has been dis discussing at the beginning of the sessions over here, that we are now in the time of uh, online interaction. So again, uh, this, uh, the, the very nice thing about uh, the new revisions of the suffer is that they uh, have uh, been, uh, they have added these uh, uh, kinds uh, of um, explanation or clarification for the teachers when they are going to go online with students so they have set it according to the different levels a1 a, a, B1, C1, C2 and together it's a B1 plus uh, they have set here for as you can see on this slide online interaction, online conversation and discussion, uh, descriptors. For C2, what can the student do? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, when you are going to work with them online, are you going to discuss personal things or is it going to be a public one or an occupational or an educational one? So uh, it, this is very interesting because it helps uh, us as teachers and educators to see the bigger picture of when we work online. Uh, what are we supposed to pay attention to and how can we use these to uh, assess at the same time? Uh, if you'd like to go uh, through it, I have set the links by the end of the session over here. It's, it's, it's all for free online and um, there are lots of reflections, um, descriptors that you can find concerning the different levels and it's highly helpful, especially uh, if you are working online. The most interesting thing about the new revisions of the SEFR is that it can, uh, uh, or it had already uh, um, addressed uh, lots of ideas, lots of ideas uh, concerning the different language. So I even consider that if a, a teacher with little experience has just got in, this can be highly helpful for her uh, or for him. And I believe also that uh, even experienced teachers can find a lot, lot, a lot of um, resources uh, or a lot of uh, gain a lot of experience uh, uh, through uh, the suffer because it gives us a look at the bigger picture and how we can even use these ideas in order to. Um, uh, to form or design uh, different kinds of courses that we uh, give to our own uh, uh, trainee teachers. Uh, also, the Al-Safar, which is something which is very interesting about it also, and this is what was discussed during the fourth week, the plurilingualism and pluriculturalism. And they stressed highly their importance. In the past, in the very first edition of the Safar, uh, it was not uh, stressed, it, they were not discussed, but with this new one, they have already stressed this and they have added a lot to uh, the uh, definition of both of them and how we can apply them again according to the different descriptors of the language. So here is just a little definition, short definition of uh, the um, both of them. Plurilingualism is the dynamic and developing linguistic repertoire of an individual user or listener and the pluriculturalism is an approach to the self and others as complex rich beings which act and react from the perspective of multiple identifications. And uh, this is very important because uh, they have stressed a lot that we, uh, during our modern times, we have lots of uh, people traveling here and there. We have lots of immigrants here and there. We have to respect the different kinds of cultures and how we can use this in order to help the students to develop their own uh, uh, learning of the language. And again, add to their own um, uh, general knowledge as well. Um, again, uh, what is interesting about the new revisions of the Sefer again, and this was discussed again during the fourth week, is the parallel project, which was made especially for teachers who teach young learners. Uh, so, and they divided them into two different uh, volumes, uh, one from seven to 10, and the other one is from uh, uh, 11 to 15. Uh, and uh, they, they, during these, they have set uh, descriptors like this. As you can see, they have divided them according to levels. They have divided them according to the strategies or the competence or whatever they are going to discuss. For example, here we have receptive activities, spoken reception, but 
for the A1, what can the student do? So they have said, can follow speech that is very slow, carefully articulated with long pauses for him or her um, to assimilate meaning and so on. So they have set out for us as teachers uh, the, the skills that, uh, the things that can be done by the students. And they have set it here, as a column here for relevant or irrelevant. Yes, this is relevant for that age, as you can see here, seven to nine. And if the students are going to assess themselves, how are they going to present this? They can say, I can understand simple description. I can understand simple description of an object, of a room. I can follow a short story and uh, if I listen to, I can understand. So uh, we as teachers, we have a very big picture. Yes, uh, we have a very big picture of uh, how we can assess our own students according to the different activities that we provide in our classes and our lessons. So again, here we can use these items here for to help the students to uh, review their work by the end of the lesson or the course. And at the same time, we can use them as indicators for ourselves as teachers to make different kinds of questionnaires to test the, uh, uh, the development of the students according to the different kinds of activities that we do inside the class. Uh, again, here is another example that is from 11 to 15, as you can see over here. Again, they set for you the skills, the abilities of the students. And on the other side, they give you how far they can do this. By the way, the, the Sefer is already presented in more than one language. One of them is French. Uh, and you can find, again, the different kinds of, um, uh, uh, of links, again, on the website of the European Council. Um, the, this was done during the... Uh, last week that we uh, discussed the pluriculturalism, the, the prior project, the online uh, uh, interaction, the the pluri, uh, sorry, the, the, the parallel project of the young uh, learners. Uh, that's what we discussed during the fourth week. And on the fourth week, we gave a sum up of all that we have done. And all during the four weeks, we asked the teachers to make reflections on the lessons, that, on lessons that they have already done, or uh, they think of lessons that they are preparing or would like to do for the next, next year or next course or whatever and apply every part of the uh, of uh, the uh, uh, suffer that we have discussed with them on these lessons and send that us to them we had very um, uh, very good and very interactive uh, reflections on the different lessons and even some people have already replanned their lessons and they said if we give these lessons again uh, they are going to do it in that way, and they started using the suffer, the different kinds of the suffers. The most interesting thing about the suffer is that it's um, it is a wide scope uh, project. So uh, we always advise the teachers when they start applying uh, these to their own work uh, to try to slow down and just to take part by part. For example, if they are working on, they want to develop their listening skills. We ask them to read the listening part quite well and try to reflect it step by step in their own classes and then move to another skill and another skill because it's a very wide one. And last year when we were at IETFL and uh, I was presenting this with a number of colleagues over there, uh, the, the people said, uh, asked, uh, told us or highlighted this point that this is a lot. Uh, the suffer is a lot for people to grasp at once. So this is what we did. Uh, we, we advise them to do is that if you would like to apply this effort or take a look at it or try to uh, reflect on it, please take it step by step because it makes a difference uh, when you do it bit by bit instead of just taking it as a whole. Of course, for uh, trainers, it's, com it's different because we are always looking at the bigger picture. So um, this is a good uh, idea for us. It helps us to systemize our work and to reflect on it every now and then. Um, I'm almost finished. Um, by the end of, uh, by, for this course of the EVO, which is always, always a pleasure to present it over there, uh, we had about 59 participants and uh, we had the teachers from almost 19 to 20 countries and it was a pleasure interacting with them because people are really looking for understanding this idea uh, of uh, the assessment and how to apply it in class. Yes, Nadim, I can uh, share the presentation, no problem. You can send me an email if you'd like to, uh, or um, if you go to the EVO, the link is already over here. You can find all the sessions and all the slides over there. They are still over there. Uh, thank you, Mariana. Uh, and here are the references uh, of all uh, the, the Sefer, uh, different kinds of Sefer. Um, um, 
links that uh, I have used. And um, if you take a look here at the very last three ones, these are very, very interesting because they are suitable for uh, uh, for different ages. There are uh, lots of self-assessment grades for young ages and for older ones. And even uh, if uh, they are for younger ones, we can uh, uh, adjust them or adapt them to uh, the older students, whether we are teaching adults or students from high, uh, uh, high school or so on. So um, you can find different kinds of assessment forms and even there is an, a kind of uh, training uh, done over there on the website. You can benefit a lot from it. Uh, I hope this was quite clear and helpful. And thank you very much, uh, Vance and Nelly, and thank you all the team of EPO. Thank you all of us for having me with me. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you very much. A very comprehensive and informative uh, work that you're doing. Um, you does anybody have any question? We're going to turn the floor over to Nelly in a moment. Uh, anybody want to open a mic and ask a question? You're quite welcome to. And of course, uh, if you go to the uh, uh, tinyurl.com slash uh, best 2020 EVO, you can find uh, all the resources that the presenters have put into that document. Okay. Well, thank you, Maha. Thank you. Okay. And um, so Nellie is going to talk to us about two of her sessions. She's an EVO coordinator. She was the EVO chief coordinator. Uh, for a couple of years, I think, or two or three years, probably, maybe, I, I'm not sure she keeps coordinating. And um, uh, the sessions she's going to talk about today are Moodle for Teachers EVO 2020. And this is something that she does as an EVO session, and she also has a, a recurring course on it. So she's quite a, I took one of her courses in, in Moodle, very informative and uh, very hands-on and uh, free. And I, I certainly welcome that. And the other one is Tools for Student Collaboration, which she's also, I'm sure she'll tell you about this. She's, she's doing it this month, I think, until uh, the end of April. So she'll tell you more about that. Right, Nellie? Yes. Thank you, Vance. <laughs> okay. And thank you, everyone, for coming. I know that many of you don't. Oh. Why not? Sorry, sorry, I meant to mute myself and I muted you. That's I'm sorry. okay, Vance. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for, for sticking uh, to this time. Okay, it's the end of uh, today's uh, event. There's another one tomorrow. Um, a little bit uh, about me before I share anything, and uh, that is that I'm, I'm a kind of unconventional uh, teacher, and uh, the way I do things on Evo is one of the reasons why I have been with Evo, and I'll get to that. I do things differently, very differently. And those of you who've taken my uh, sessions, and Vance is right, they're very hands-on. So um, if you're not ready to get your hands dirty and work, then they're not going to be much use to you, and you're probably going to give up. So uh, I've developed certain ways. Can you see that, Vance and everybody? Let me go to the beginning. I see the slide. Are you able to yes. see that? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So I am a very proud uh, member of EVO and um, EVO 2020 was no different. I always say this because it's the truth. EVO is the highlight of my year. And uh, this year, it was also the highlight, even though I was really, really busy. I started with um, Moodle for Teachers uh, after having a wonderful experience uh, moderating what was called, co-moderating, what was called um, a, a session called Digifolios. I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, I was asked to co to be one of the co-moderators, so I had to find out what it was, which I did. We did this on Ning, which is no longer available, and we did um, present it at um, TESOL that year in uh, 2009, I believe. 
So that was my first dip. What I did in that session was unbelievable. As far as I was concerned, my idea was to get everybody working together. Now, it may sound easy today, but in 2009, working together was not um, very easy because you had to really think, how do you get people working together online when you don't have that many tools? So what I do on Evo is I experiment and I explore, and that's how I learn. I love the energy that uh, the teachers come with. I don't get this energy from my students. I mean, I try, I really do, but they don't really allow me to experiment. It's mostly about grades and grades and, and taking care of paperwork and lots of boring things as far as I'm concerned. I like to, um, to take chances in the way I learn and in the way I teach. So the energy that uh, the participants, the teachers who come to Evo is amazing and the love they bring with them and the gratitude and the passion for learning just makes Evo uh, the perfect place for me to try things out. So since I've been working with Moodle since uh, 2003 and I started teaching teachers for free, of course, as Van said, uh, since 2006, I thought it would be only the right thing to try things out in Evo because what happens on Evo is that we get a lot of teachers and that's what I needed, a lot of teachers who are passionate about learning. So uh, Moodle for Teachers started in 2012, so you can count, we've been going strong. There are a lot of, if you're interested in uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo, you can take a look at Evo 12, Evo 13. 14, 15, it's all out there because uh, teachers have been reflecting in their blogs and, and there's lots of information, which is nice. It's nice to know. The way um, I used it this year was through Moodle and Zoom. Now, what's um, exciting about Moodle is that it really allows us to connect and build relationships. It's a platform that was built for that. Okay, uh, Martin Dogiamis, who uh, is the founder of Moodle, did it uh, during, well, he came up with the idea during his uh, doctoral studies because he was living far away and he needed something. He needed, he needed online learning, so he came up with Moodle. And it's built for collaboration. Teachers don't get it, and they use it as a repository. They just add content. It's like a storeroom, you know, instead of turning it into something beautiful, they turn it into a storeroom. So my goal is to uh, help teachers understand that Moodle is all about connections. So uh, from Moodle, Evo, uh, Mo Moodle for Teachers Evo 2016 to 20, this was the logo. And before that, you can see the logos were made by Ludmilla Smirnova. She started in 2012. She stopped moderating uh, with us. She was really busy in 2016, so I came up with my own logo. The thing about Evo is that we also meet and we become friends. So it's not only our connections online, everybody connects with everybody, not just the moderators, but the uh, participants too, but we meet. And when we meet, it's like we've been a family forever. So building communities is my goal, both face-to-face -face with my students, and I teach uh, K-12 up to adult university students to get everybody working together. And I do use Moodle in a blended learning format uh, with my students from uh, the age of 12 to the age of, uh, I don't know, 80, I guess. Um, so Moodle for Teachers is actually um, not just Moodle for Teachers, it's on the Moodle for Teachers platform. And on that platform, there are other free professional development courses, not sessions, because Evo is a session, it's not a course. So Moodle for Teachers Evo is a session. Under the category Electronic Village Online, there are lots, I think this year there were five, uh, last year maybe even more, um, as Danielle and Letizia mentioned, their session was also here, but not in Evo 20, I believe in Evo 17 or 18. 
So Evo, uh, Moodle for Teach is a place for anyone who wants to give their Evo sessions. For those of you that are considering, um, try it out, okay? Uh, Moodle is really, as I said, it's an amazing house where you can roam around, have fun, and connect with people. The way I work on Moodle for Teachers, it's not really about Moodle, it's about learning to teach online, but it's mostly about connecting with people and learning how to connect, how to work together. And then you also learn Moodle. So Moodle, learning about Moodle is just like, uh, you know, as Vance mentioned, we're learning together. It's just a topic that we use, okay? But the idea, of course, is for everyone to connect so that we can be working together. Uh, there's a process of teaming up in both uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo 20 and in um, collaborating, Tools for Student Collaboration, and the teaming up is the same. Moodle has a feature called teaming up. And participants go in, they can start a team, a group it's called, a group. They can start a team and other people join them or they can join other teams that are already there. And the process of teaming up is done in different ways and it's up to you as a teacher how you do it. What I usually do is I get them to think of topics, they communicate with one another and they try to figure out the best people or people that have common interests to work with in these groups. It's not complicated, it's quite easy on the Moodle and it's a lot of fun. So as I said, it's not just uh, Moodle, it's also other tools that are external to Moodle. But if you know Moodle, and I'm not sure that any of you know Moodle, uh, there are a lot of things. Moodle is full, maybe too full. And maybe that's why a lot of teachers um, just use it for content because it seems really complicated. So to make it easy, I'll explain what I do so that everybody is able to sustain their learning and it's not a big learning curve. There are preferences, and take a look at all the preferences. You're able to um, do a lot of things here, get badges, connect with Backpack, which doesn't exist anymore, it's now Badger. So you connect with Badger for your badges. Just the uh, preferences for the user is complicated on its own. So how do I get teachers to actually learn these things? Look at all the uh, resources, annot annotatable file, book. You can create all of these. It's a lot. And look at this. These are activities <laughs> that you can have on the Moodle. So there's so much to choose from. You know, it's like going to a restaurant and the menu is just so full. You don't know. So you ask the waiter, I mean, what do I eat? There's just so much out there. And notice big blue button and Zoom are also um, activities on Moodle, look at what's here, okay? These, the slides are available, so you can take a look and see what's there. WizIQ is also considered an activity. So there is so much out there, but you don't have to use it all, and that's the whole point. So what the participants do is they practice. There are practice courses. These are not EVO sessions, they're courses. Practice courses on Moodle for Teachers EVO session, um, there is a practice area so you can practice as a teacher so you can use whatever activities you want or resources and then there is a practice area for teachers as managers and as a manager you have other rights like you can enroll students you can um, edit your I'm trying to get rid of these images here that are driving me crazy um, there, okay, I got rid of it. No, I have to. Okay, so that's that. Um, and these are the collaborative courses. So at the end of, uh, well, actually not the end, they team up, uh, the participants team up so they can, wait a minute, I think I lost it here. So they can work together on team collaborative courses. And these are some of the courses. There were, uh, five teams each team had i don't know about 10 or more it depends on the team and they work together each um, participant had a section and they would work on the section add their activities but they had an umbrella topic that they decided on beforehand when they were teaming up 
If it doesn't make sense, just grab the mic and ask, and I'll stop and explain, okay, if you have any comments or questions. So the external tools that we used um, were Screencast-O-Matic because the participants um, had to use it to explain as they learned about each of the activities that they used. Whatever they did, whatever they learned, they had to teach it. And that's what I've been doing for years, getting teachers to learn things or getting students, it doesn't matter, learners to learn things by demonstrating the process. So if you learned a tool, what did you do? Show me, show us. So that's what they do through Screencast-O-Matic and then they share this and the reflections on a remake. They don't create their own Padlet because that would be too easy. And Nelly does not make life easy for anybody. So you really have to work. <laughs> okay, you have to work. So they have to remake so they can learn how to remake. So for example, if they wanna learn how to use Padlet, they have to create a video tutorial demonstrating how they remade the Padlet wall. So actually it's a lot of fun, they enjoy it, and you'll know why in a minute. So there's a lot of peer learning, so it's repeated. People don't say the same things, they say different things, but they're actually showing the same uh, tool in their way. So there's a lot of peer learning going on. They have to respond to one another to get a badge. So that's the uh, process. <coughs> Excuse me. Video tutorials. That's how um, they learn. And um, the idea, of course, is to show what you've learned through video tutorials and reflect on the process. And as someone mentioned, um, teachers and learners in general want to be active. They don't want the teacher to do it all for them. I mean, right now I'm doing it all for you, I'm explaining. But in my courses and my EVO sessions, I don't do anything, really. They respond to each other. I do give grades, they get grades for their video tutorials so that everybody does it seriously, otherwise they wouldn't do it, they would just respond and I wouldn't be able to know who did what. So I do go over their video tutorials, but they respond to each other a lot and they enjoy that. Uh, sometimes I think that they prefer to learn from one another than to learn from someone else. So it's really, really owning your own learning and um, learning from each other. These are the badges and that's one of the reasons why they work so hard. Believe it or not, even adults like badges. So if they know that they do certain tasks and they get a badge, they're gonna do it, they're gonna finish it. And if they're on a team, they're not gonna disappoint their teammates, they're gonna do it. So there are two things here. Um, make sure that they're working together, give them all the uh, tools, whatever they need, help them facilitate uh, teaming up and learning together, and then award them. And they love that, they really do. And then of course at the end, we give them a certificate. So that's Moodle for teachers. Are there any questions about it? I think I've gone through everything. Nelly, there's any? a question yes. from, from yeah, Mar I can't Martine. See it, so. Or Martine, would you like to? Um, yeah, could you voice your question? Yeah. Yeah. Martine? Oh, oh she has it in the chat. Um, she says oh, that. Okay. It, um, the problem is that Moodle is usually embedded in a university platform and you cannot oh. invite teachers or lecturers from other universities. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, there, there are a lot, yes. It's not like Blackboard. Uh, it's a little more flexible, but you can have your own Moodle sites. You don't have to depend on university um, if you like. And I like the freedom of being able to teach my way and to experiment, so I got my own Moodle. And anyone can do it. In fact, you can even teach on Moodle for teachers as long as it's uh, free. In other words, you can't make money on Moodle for teachers and everything that you do uh, is Creative Commons, so it can be shared. You can back it up, but you have to be aware of the fact that people might 
take your work. Um, so that's the only thing. But Moodle for Teachers platform, the Moodle is available for anyone who wants to use it to teach for free. I don't know if that answers your question, if you want to experiment with Moodle. Thank you, Nellie. So, you know, just contact me if that um, interests you. Let me stop screen sharing here. I thought there was more, but I guess not. Any other questions? Okay, yeah, so just to give you, yeah, sorry. go this ahead. Is uh, hi. Yeah. Thanks very, very much. Um, yeah, Moodle, as Martine said, it's something, well, we at my university we're told we have to use, and so I've never explored it. And um, I guess we, many of us feel now we've actually got to go and explore these things <laughs> in a way that we never, <laughs> never realized. Yeah. We, and um, yeah. so your, your Evo is just a bit too early for quite a lot of people. Is there some other way that we can, somewhere else we can Of go course. To, uh, um, every year in May, which is next month, you can join it already. There's something called Moodle MOOC. And this is Moodle MOOC 15. You can join that if you like. Uh, the site, it's actually, uh, there's Electronic Village Online. And there's a course right now, remote, there's uh, live online virtual engagement, which Vance mentioned that I'm giving courses now for free also on Moodle for Teachers on how to use live online virtual engagement. And again, it's in teams. So if you're ready to work in teams, that's great. Uh, if you go into Moodle for Teachers and to the list of courses, you'll see that um, there is a MOOC, a Moodle MOOC, okay, starting uh, May 1st. So you can join it right now if you like, and then uh, you'll have the experience of uh, Moodling, as we say, and you can become a Moodler and learn other ways of uh, using Moodle. I never thought I'd like MOOC. Moodle, sorry. I love Moodle. I'm telling yeah. you. Uh, anybody who knows me knows that, uh, and I use different platforms. I also use university platforms and other platforms, not just the ones that I built, but I have my, I have a few Moodle sites and I also uh, support Moodle. If you're interested, I'm also the admin of a few uh, Moodle, school Moodles. Okay, so Moodle is really my, uh, my thing. And I experiment on it. I do a lot of different things just to see uh, how it can be improved for student collaboration. So um, I think I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. Okay, so Moodle for Teachers looks like this from the student's perspective. There's a lot of stuff here and, and you get used to it. Okay, you get used to all these things. You can go in right now if you'd like to explore it as a guest. Uh, there are no more enrollments. Are you sharing your screen? Time. Nope. Yeah. yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Oh, I stopped I sharing the yeah, screen. Yeah, you stopped Sorry. sharing the screen. Oh my gosh, that is terrible of me. Amazing, it looks that. just like Zoom. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm supposed to be the expert here. Yeah, right, there we go. Okay, so now you can see it. So um, I'm gonna add it to the chat box so you can uh, join and take a look. It's gonna be open until the end of the summer when we Go to the next one if we get accepted of course i say we but it's only me actually but i think of it as we hopefully uh, others will join as moderators maybe so that's what it looks like the teaming up i wanted to show you. i don't want to take too much time here because um the teaming up is um in week two let's see um i want to show you what the system looks like there it is forming groups so that's the icon there and the way they do it okay is this you you can create your own group and then encourage people to join you in their discussion forums where people discuss uh, what they're planning to do and so on they start this from week one week two they start joining or you can become a member of this group this group is called ecology you can become a member right now there are five out of six so that's how the grouping works, which is an amazing system. And, and Moodle has a few um, different ways of grouping. Okay, so are there any question, other questions about M Moodle for teachers?
Okay, so let's go on to um, the next one. So the next session that I chose, because I uh, moderated more than two sessions, guilty, you're not supposed to do that. Um, one is enough. And if you're interested in moderating, you might want to consider it for an Evo 21. Um, again, it's from the same category. I use Zoom and Moodle for tools for student collaboration. This was the first year. Um, and it was kind of um, an experiment to see how it would work. Uh, the tools that I used was VoiceThread for the introductions, Google Drive Docs, and not just the docs, actually, it's everything. It's all the files, um, Google Doc, Google Slides, Google Forms, Google Sheets. Um, and I think that's it, right? That's all there is. And Padlet, of course, they had to add all their work on the Padlet. They uh, teamed up in week two when they started working on the presentations. So again, they worked in teams because I don't know how to work in any other way. I, I, I don't know if I can work without teams. And the way they teamed up, you're familiar with the logo already, teaming up based on 50 debate topics that I use in my classes. I, my students also team up for debates. Um, that's one way that they team up. They choose a topic and they work on that topic and then they come up with a debate. So they also choose topics. So there are 50 topics. Um, they can decide whatever topic they're gonna choose and that's how they created presentations based on the topics. And the presentations have no words. It's only images on the slides and then they talk about them. That's how I do it with my young learners and adults. So uh, teaming up, What's great about working in teams that I found, especially with Eva, when a lot of people drop off and they disappear, and my goal was to keep them engaged and interested. And I figured, well, if I do the work, they're not going to stay. But if they do the work, it might be too much. So what is too much for them to keep them? Uh, what I found was teaming up kept them in online because they felt responsible. When you're on a team, it's not only you, you have to take other people into account. So people learn to care about each other and they develop trust and they're all there for each other. Nobody dropped off, even though it's online and nobody sees you and nobody can call you or anything. Uh, people took responsibility and they did the work as a team. So team task trust is what I call it. Uh, the teams work as one and they develop a trust. I wanted to mention that I also worked with Kzen. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a feedback form where you can add um, audio to uh, as comments, as feedback to the docs. Again, it was based on peer learning because that's what I do. I believe in the learner doing the work and um, that it's learning by teaching and I'm not the learner, I'm the teacher. So I'm gonna make sure that they have what they're, what they're supposed to have, which is the learning. So it's not about me, it's not about what I do or don't do, it's about them. And um, I'm very happy when I'm left out and they're working together and developing communities. That's, um, that's my goal. And when that happens, when they don't depend on me, but they're depending on each other and they're gaining information from each other and they're asking each other instead of asking me, I don't feel left out. I feel blessed that I developed, that I helped develop. It's not me. It, they did the work, but I was there to facilitate these communities. Again, they do all the work through video tutorials. They have to do it and they do it using Screencast-O-Matic and nobody has ever complained. <laughs> which is a good thing, um, and I'm happy about that. They're happy to speak and present because they want to be heard and they want to talk. They don't want to just listen and you know be passive. So it's all about show and reflect. And I think you mentioned reflection too, Richard, and some of the others mentioned reflect. They love it. They love the chance to be able to express what it felt like. How did it feel to create that video tutorial? Were you frustrated? And what's amazing is that 
um, they do express their frustrations, but they thank me because I put them in a position that they can reflect on not just the good things, but some of the difficult things and the hardships that they had. And everybody shares their hardships. Um, and, and it's a very, very engaging um, class. And that's where I get my aha moments because it's online, it's not face-to-face, -face, and it's working. So how does it work? Well, as I said, teamwork and rewards. Being rewarded for your hard work, okay? And it's a give and take. They learn from each other. I learn from them. And I think I learn more from them than they learn from me because they're doing it. And I'm not really there to provide them with information. And what do I like about Evo? You know, you may ask me, Nellie, why do you keep coming back? And Christine will say, why do you do it? And don't leave us, but why do you do it? And Vance also asked, why do you do it? Well, it's because, first of all, I get a chance to explore and experiment. And I love it when people show appreciation. And when they show appreciation, which is what they do in Evo, that makes me feel good because we all want to be appreciated. I don't think there's anybody out there that doesn't want to be told that they did something good or that, you know, they're, they're heard, they're seen. We appreciate what you do, Vance. And that makes you feel good. Jane, this is wonderful. Christine, I'm so happy you did what you did because if you hadn't done it, we wouldn't be here. So being appreciated is very important to the teachers and to the students. It's a two-way process and we thrive on this. And that's why I'm in EVO and I will stay in EVO. So for as long as I can, I'm not leaving. Okay, so I'm here to stay and I hope that uh, you will stay too. And if you do, this is what you'll get, badges, lots of badges. And there's so much fun to create too. That's the fun that I get, creating the sessions and awarding the badges. That's my fun. But once I create everything, I stay back and the participants do the work. So uh, I use, um, if you're interested, I use Canva for the badges. And I also use um, another system that they're charging money for now. I think that's what I use this for events. You use it as well, right? You, are you familiar with this? Does this look familiar? Um, I've seen, you mean Credly for badges? Credly, Credly, that's Credly, Credly. But, but Credly has yeah. gone to from freemium I know. to mm, premium. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the final certificate, but you know what? Participants, EVO participants prefer the badges because uh, they get it directly after they do certain tasks. So you get rewarded for doing the task. You know you finish the task when you get that badge and that makes them uh, feel good. I think I'm almost finished. And that's it, EVO 2020. I'm looking forward to EVO 2020. 21 next year and i hope you'll be there too okay well thank, thank you. you very much uh actually we've done very well we're five minutes Did over, we do over yeah that i was hoping top. i was uh, i was trying to time that okay great you did very well so. <laughs> yeah but but you know we don't really have to stop I mean, you know people can leave if they want we've got 41 participants here right now um okay down from 57 something like that but if uh anybody has any comments or questions they'd like to ask anybody we're uh you can grab a mic if you want and i guess i might also say we're, gonna, we're coming back here tomorrow uh, for two sessions uh this one started at 1400, U, uh, sorry, yes, 1400 UTC. The, that's, did I get that right? Yeah, it's two o'clock in the after 2 p.m. The one in the morning starts at 2 a.m. UTC, which is, uh, um, yeah, okay, oh, two to four, that's pretty easy. That's one in the morning, then also another one at the same time tomorrow. So we have uh, two more sessions tomorrow. And, um, Advance. 
Yes. Yeah, this is Sayyid Irshad Ali from India. Hi, Sayyid. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for making me the part of this uh, privileged group. Well, I'm uh, glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Absolutely awesome uh, presentation and also the session, uh, especially uh, uh, Dr. Anneli has made my day. Uh, to be frank, I'm a little lazy and because of uh, unavoidable circumstances, I could not be able to participate and you know uh, put in my efforts. Uh, but uh, she really made me uh, that we have to work on it and uh, that was quite clear that unless you work, you cannot get it. Uh, surely I'm looking forward to work. Uh, and also learn a lot at the same time, not only learn, share my uh, feedback and also inputs what I teach in my classroom here in India, uh, which is a large group of students. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank a lot, uh, mm -hmm. Jason sir, Mr. Steven sir, and uh, uh, Nelly and everyone over there. Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Glad to have you with us. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything about the uh, courses? Were you participating in courses? Is that why you're here? Or you, you want to tell us anything about your experience? Like Syed did just now? I see Christine is there. Hi, Christine. I just mm -hmm. noticed that you're, you're with us. Hi, Christine. You want to say Christine, a few words? Uh, Christine from Lebanon. Mm -hmm. I think Christine is the coordinator, isn't she? Of, Hi. Um, Call IS. Hi there. I've been, I've been here all along. I've been here for all the hours. I've been mm -hmm. here all along. Well, I, I didn't see your face. Now that I see your face, I know it's you. I lost connection one time when I lost electricity, but I was fine. Wow. Very okay. interesting. I thank everyone for organizing this. Vance, Christine, Nelly, and I Jane? have enjoyed being part of the audience, listening in, and I thank everyone for being online during lockdown <laughs> yeah and i hope to be here tomorrow as well i hope to be here tomorrow as well good okay and it's been very enlightening and it's too bad we're not in denver but that's okay that's okay we're online globally and that's what's great about it yeah we're modeling what people are doing and how one way to do it so exactly that's what exactly. We only we're not new to it this yeah. is like old yeah. stuff for us <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. well, but people have to go online and they're having trouble going online if they're not blended. And so what we've been well, doing, I'm gonna, yes? I'm mm -hmm. going to share a lot of this information with my graduate students and I'm going to share the links. Mm -hmm. You know, I met it to them, but I guess, you know, none of them chose to attend, but I'm going to be sharing the links. So I'm oh. sure many of doing the same thing. Yeah, we're recording everything. And so yeah. we'll capture as much screenshots, whatever people share on Facebook or wherever. We'll put them in the, in, I, I keep a blog at learningtogether.net. And I put all the, all the uh, sessions will be there online. So learningtogether.net, I'll put that in the chat. But Great. I, Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything? I'm typing in the chat. What was that C? Hmm? I saw a C. A the letter C? The letter C. Before. Where? On the screen. Oh. That's Oh, that's, that's Christine. I see. Okay. It's someone without a camera. It's, it's just someone without a camera. No. Oh, is that, I don't believe that. Who else is here? My goodness. Did I just I, see? I closed my video because I don't want to take too much from I the camera. I can't see everybody. Yeah. Wait so a minute. Me. Do we have, um, who else is here? Did I just see? An old I'm here, but I've been lurking because I'm so busy. Oh I'm my gosh, I can't believe you're here. Wow. I'm I was multitasking. So I'm, I'm... I'm oddly unable to admit participants. We've got two people in the waiting room. I don't know why I can't let them in. I don't think the meeting had a time to it. Unless somebody's frozen. Uh-oh. Something's weird. Oh, it's been so long. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> my, 
It's great to see you. I'm glad I I'm glad I yes. stuck around to hear you. It was wonderful. I'm just I'm saying hello to everyone. Glad. That's all. I gotta run too. Yeah. You know, somebody was saying that, you know, the kids aren't busy and they're bored, but adults are so busy. We don't have time for anything, even though there's lockdown. I am so busy. So is my husband. Like we're doing stuff that we hadn't well, done in years. What I'm doing is mentoring people who have no idea how to teach online. I've got chock-a-block appointments. That's what I'm doing right now. I've got someone teaching this summer who has to prepare her course online for the first time ever. So. That's great. We're popular now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were against us until now, eh? Hate it. As Christine said, yeah, they used to complain about who needs to go online? Right. Why? I had the same thing. <laughs> but they're calling it, there's a new name, you know, it's not going online anymore. It's called remote learning. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that's the new word, remote learning, like remote control. Okay. Well, touching base with you. Uh, I got to run. Bye. Okay. Uh -oh. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hello. Hi. This is Agateshwar Rao from Telangana. Yes, I am interested to join the meeting. I would like to know something about it. Hello. Yeah. What's your question? I'm sorry. You want to know what this is? This Evo session? Yes, I have joined. I would first, I have joined. Just know I don't know anything about it. Uh, just I will be listening to you first. This is the best of Evo, Vance. Maybe you can explain what we're doing here because it's true. Not everybody knows. They just joined, but they don't really know. Can I can you? Vance, okay you need to unmute. You? Yeah, Vance, you're, you're uh, using sorry to uh, sign language. Sorry, yeah, I, I just put a link yeah, he's to ebiosessions.org. Telangana, I can help him out. Hmm. Well, it, you'll just have to follow our links and find out what we're doing. And uh, ebiosessions.org is where you find out about yes. Electronic Village Online. And there's I get, uh, lots of material there. Stevens, I can help him out. Yes, season. Okay. Well, anyway, we're the we're doing the best of EVO session, breaking it down into three um, three parts. And can someone put the link to the tiny URL in the chat? Maybe Jane can do that. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah, or even uh, any of the links. But anyway, if you put, she's going to put the link in the chat. And what yes. that will do is tell you where you can go to get information about what we're doing tomorrow. So we're back tomorrow in two sessions, uh, one at 2 a.m. GMT and another one at the same time as this one, 14 to, uh, to 1600 GMT. And so all that stuff, really, you could go and read it, uh, read about it. Thank you, Jane. Okay, so that's uh, that's if you you'll just have to click on that link and go and read what we're doing because otherwise you can see what we're doing we're just talking we're, we're, these are people who are moderators of evo sessions who are giving presentations tonight and then we have also people who are taking the presentations and uh people who've popped in from somewhere who knows but uh we're just talking about the sessions that people gave in january and february and in next January and February, we'll give more. And if you're interested in more of the more sessions, you can go to uh, eviosessions.org, or it's also eviosessions.pbworks.com if you prefer. And you can find out how to get involved in EVO, how to take these sessions if you want. But you'll just have to click on the links and explain. Uh, Vance, mm -hmm. excuse me. What I did was I added the um, the link to um, groups IO for the Evo mm -hmm. community. Okay, that's where you want to go again. So that's yeah. If anyone's interested in joining the community, mm -hmm. there it is. You can interact with people there. Yeah, yeah. And you can learn more about next year's uh, mm -hmm. Evo Twenty One. 
and how you can join the free session. Yeah, yeah. If you go, if you join that group, the EVO community, then you'll be able to ask questions on in the uh, listserv, and we're quite happy to help you. Just, uh, it's hard to really ex explain it right now. We've just been online for two hours, and for some of it's a, for some of us, it's a little bit late. <laughs> but we're back again tomorrow. So go to those uh, sites and find out what we're doing, and um, especially the uh, tinyurlcom slash evo, sorry slash best twenty twenty evo. That's the one that uh, has what we're doing right now what we're doing tomorrow and what we've done tonight. So is there anything else that we can help anybody with? Okay, well, this has been uh, the Zoom link for tomorrow. Here again, uh, Jimmy, Sue, uh, you can go to that link. Let me just show you uh, if I can find it. I'll try and copy it or maybe... Um, I, can, I can do yeah, it. Yeah, I think. Oh, I found it though. <laughs> okay, yeah, now I've got it in my buffer. Yeah, this is this is where you go to find out where the sessions are tomorrow, find out all the stuff that we're doing. Just go there and you'll find uh, uh, to that tiny URL and you'll find the uh, a table of contents. Click on the links for the schedule for tomorrow and you'll be able to read all about it. People, All the people have crowdsourced this information. The people giving presentations have been filling in a form and they uh, that's what they're going to be doing tomorrow. So you can you can see what's going on and you can also go to uh, learning together uh, dot net and find the links well you can but ba basically let's not confuse things just go to uh, uh, the tiny URL that we had there okay anything else we can help Any, anybody else have any questions Okay, well, uh, this is uh, this has been the best of EVO, uh, part one of three. There are two mm -hmm. more tomorrow, parts two and three tomorrow, and there's a link we've been putting in the text chat, so you can scroll that back and find the links. The uh, I can even just put it here again. I'll just stick it there. It's in my buffer. Okay, there you go. So if you go to that link, you'll find out where we are tomorrow. Is this happens to be Learning Together, episode 445, and uh, this is the fourth, oh, we're in the fourth, we started in the third, but now we're in the fourth of uh, April, uh, where I am anyway, and um, it's a little, let's see, well, in UTC, it must be, a, well, it's a, it's 12, well, anyway, it's, it's a little after midnight here, but uh, that would be 1600 something UTC. 4th of April, 2020. That's because Vance is in Malaysia. Yeah, I'm in Malaysia. Yeah, and, and Jane because is in right the Because right now, time. it's still April 3rd here, so you can't fool oh, me. No, no, no. We're ahead of you. We're ahead of the curve. We're just a little bit up there, you know. So You're older. I'm younger. <laughs> yeah, we're moving faster over here in this part of the world. Okay, well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Okay. Bye, Christine. Bye, bye bye. Nice to see everybody. See everybody again tomorrow. Bye. Uh, we'll yep. see you. Yeah, in the morning. Jane and I will be here. Bye, and Jane. Thank we'll you. Bye. Okay, maybe bye. we could. Yeah, maybe we could talk about. Um, Richard just brought up um, something about many mm -hmm. children nowadays are going completely without education or to mm. to lack of connection, and there's a need for a new solution. Maybe we can talk about this tomorrow. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. There's no, but what about social distancing? Um, somebody asked me about that in India too, because they're not allowed to be outside, so and they don't have um, mobile devices either, so they're all sitting in the house without anyone with no education at all right now. Absolutely. Rich, Richard, would you like to say something? It just uh, struck me that we we <laughs> shouldn't neglect the fact that. The, from my from what I've heard from many teachers in in India, Nepal, places, uh, they, we, and we know this that connection problems are so difficult, and many many teachers I've worked with have had to have been using mobile phones anyway. Um, 
not uh, sort of stable on the online connection, but what um, kind of through their mobile phone. So it, it means that things like text become very much harder to use. Um, things that we just need to take account of, I think, if we're thinking about the majority of teachers around the world and the majority of students around the world, we in the UK, USA, we we thinking, oh, everyone's getting online. So many students in the world are not connected at all with their teachers. Isn't that right? I mean, yeah, that, this is a real big problem at the moment. Yes. And as you say, Nelly, well, physical distancing. But, you know, I've heard, well, Nepal, sorry, in India, um, they started to use radio much more to reach students. Of course, you can't have interactive teaching, but it's it's a way that some some um, local authorities are trying to reach reach students I don't know I have no solutions it's just something that we need to be thinking about I think um, I did hear a solution for India I gave someone an account on with IQ for free so he's teaching like over 200 students from India in, in, in an Indian language I don't know it starts with a P I can't pronounce it and what they do is because they don't have they're all in the villages and he teaches in this government school so what they're doing is they're coming up to one area they're they're staying at a distance but they're putting um their phones and so that if someone one person has a phone they're looking at the uh the live session say with iq or zoom it doesn't really matter through the phone and that's how they're learning they can hear and talk and um so they're getting something these are university students so there are ways of getting people i mean they're not together too close they're staying like you're supposed to stay what two meters apart so they're not that close and yet they could see the phone someone's phone or someone's laptop and that's how they're learning uh some colleagues and i have started something i've just put it in the text chat something called we're calling it talent teaching and learning in isolation and this is something we just started uh last week and we're uh, inviting people to come into this space uh tinyurl.com slash talent 2020 and if you want to have a look there and if you'd like to schedule a conversation uh we have we think we have a lot of people who would like who would like to talk to one another. there's also an archive of past conversations we've only had one but there were 21 people in that uh, conversation so uh, anyhow if you're interested just have a look there and if you would like to um, join conversations or instigate one then please just put yourself on the list there uh, i'll i'll host it in zoom here or if you have your own host you can do that so uh, i would host it in zoom anytime between 2 a.m gmt and 1400 GMT. Anytime in there, I'm I'm at home, so uh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> as long as Neither we're in are we fans. Yeah. Nobody's well, it, going anywhere. We're all at home. <laughs> exactly. So there you are. So anyway, <laughs> and people who are feeling they would like to reach out and just connect and, and not only that, but discuss the thing that Richard just brought up, uh, you're quite welcome to put yourself down on a calendar there and we'll meet you if you propose a time and we'll host it and we'll make it a learning together session if you want. So anyway, just have a look and if it interests you, uh, you can do that. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. That's, that's your recording. I'll stop <laughs> mine as well. Thank you. Thank you, so everyone. We're Thanks for joining yeah. us. That's strange. Thank you. Okay. That's okay. I've I've got a master recording here, but I thank think you're recording on your computer. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.